Hello everybody, welcome to Squid Junction 66. I am Sigdakari and joining me today is my boy, We Like Rice. How you doing today, Rice? I am extremely tired, but hey, we are here <laughs> to give you guys an amazing set. We have Jelly Squids versus Biscuit Factory for our first set today. Dude, I am so excited. We're gonna start this off on Zones Haggle. We're gonna head over to Inkla Art Academy uh, to play some tower control, and if we need the third map, we're going over to Score Score to play some Clam Blitz. Now, Rice, what are your thoughts on Zones Haggle uh, uh, for both these teams? You know, I I'm not too familiar with Biscuit Factory. I'm assuming they're a pickup. Um, I recognize Riddy on the team, a really strong anchor player, and then Jelly Squids. I know. They run kind of... Oh, actually, it's half a pickup for Jelly Squids. Okay. We might see an Octobrush knowing that uh, NATO is playing for them right now. Oh, we could. And I, that is an Octobrush. I, I like I like uh, Jelly Squids comp. This is really uh, interesting. We have Leader, O-Brush, Neo, Splash with a shot to back it out or round it out. Our uh, Red is getting super aggressive here on the 96. That's such a powerful <laughs> weapon, especially with the wall, but... Kraken's not really the strongest on this uh, mode in splat zones. You don't have a lot of paint, and you kind of just have to get kills to get value. Yeah, the Kraken doesn't really paint too well for you, but you know, th that doesn't matter. Bis uh, Biscuit Factory pushes up early, but seeing the 96 go down a little early, the Zooka pops, tries to get the splash, but has the back up here. Yep, the strike's coming out from Diamond. We'll see if Jelly Squids can retake this. It looks like they're going to get part of a neutralization. Hamram's going to come through with the Zooka, get one pick on the Kitsuki. Not going to quite find any more with the Zooka, but could possibly go for some more. Going to elect to just uh, flip the zone while waiting for jumps from the rest of their team. But in the meantime, uh, Biscuit Factory... Uh, flips the zone. However, that gives enough time for Jelly Squid's Neo Splash player to get another strike up, and Jelly Squid's take control of the zone again. Yeah, I actually forgot. Recently, Neo Splash getting a buff 200p for special instead of 210. So lots of try strikes coming out from that uh, Neo Splash on Diamond. But we see Biscuit Factory get the cap here. Red in a bit of a dangerous spot here, but able to retreat with that Kraken. Yep, Kraken is you know it just enables you to play in some of these super aggressive uh situations uh and in these super risky spots in the map like we just saw but so does zipcaster and it enables jelly squids to get the pick onto ready their uh firefin charger and that that leaves jelly squids in a pretty good position it's not gonna be enough to prevent biscuit factory from flipping the zone over but it's going to maintain Jelly Squid's position here as Red pops in with another crack. And can they get the pick on the Diamond here? That's the real question. Oh, not quite so close with the charge shot. But now they're going to have to stay alive and stall as long as possible. It's not going to be longer for than a couple seconds. But that's going to be enough to get another set of strikes out. Possibly the zone. Not quite. However, the overrush goes down again. <laughs> at the cost of the zone. No, for sure. And we're kind of in this like back and forth state of the game no one really getting a solid lockout both teams either flipping or uncapping just you know with so much capping happening the penalty is so low right now yeah uh only 15 on jelly squids and three on biscuit factory here the cooler is going to come out gonna hopefully reduce the effect of this zuka if it gets any picks it's not going to quite get any uh, but with the amount of space that Diamond's creating with these strikes, Jelly Squid is going to take that zone right back and really quickly. It looks like they're going to try and start scoring again, as well as as well as well NATO getting the pick on Riddy here. That's the strikes uh, basically fully gone. It's just Red and Kitsuki on the right side, as well as Tess uh, on the tri are getting back up there. Uh, <laughs> Biscuit Factory does flip the zone and give Jelly Squid's a penalty, but now we're just back to neutral with another set of strikes from Diamond. Yeah, Diamond using those strikes has to run away from that Kraken. Actually going for a play here, trying to fight the Splash. Nato here for the cleanup, and it's just a Kraken behind them right now, the 96. Yeah, they're really good at stalling. They're using that wall to the best of their ability, and they managed to jump out for free, enabling Tess to get in with some uh, fizzy bombs, and kind of makes this a little bit easier for uh, Biscuit Factory, as well as that Zuka pick from Kitsuki. What an insane shot. Now Red's coming through with the Kraken. Can they get anything going looks like they might be able to no not quite just a 50 damage hit but that is going to lead to a pick and a full flip in favor of biscuit factory here we only have a minute 15 left in this first map 
for sure. And we see Nato here trying to make a play, gets taken down by Red. Red just trying to hold space here, holding forward a little bit. A little dangerous, but they do have the cooler if they do go down. Yeah, and they are only they are only about 30% away from that Kraken as well. So it's not the end of the world if they get caught out. You know, they have the wall. They have so much stuff to stall and mitigate their picks. And that's looking really good for them so far. Uh, as, as Biscuit Factory takes control of the zone again, they're only got 20 uh, penalty points left. Taking the lead here is entirely uh, in the cards. As Red gets aggressive on the Diamond, trying to force them back. But Nato gets another pick and stalls out the zone a little bit more. Diamond with these strikes as well. It's maybe going to neutralize it. Not quite. Biscuit Factory still holds control. Uh, and Hamram with the Zuka gonna get some shots in the back of the zone. Gonna stall it out for even longer. We're only down to 20 seconds left, and it really is anybody's game here. If Jelly Squids take it, you know, they just have to hold for a little bit. But it looks like Biscuit Factory is gonna collapse on the entire team. They are gonna take the lead right quick here, and it doesn't look like Jelly Squids is gonna be able to come back uh, to take this map one. I really need to know how many Krakens Red has gotten in this game. I feel like I saw at least, like, if I'm being realistic, six Krakens in one game? That's oh, that's God, a little crazy. At minimum, <laughs> dude. Oh my God. I, I really want to see the numbers on that, honestly. that Those Krakens seemed like they made a ton of space, especially on that right-hand side. It also gave Red a really good uh, way out uh, just by dropping. And mm. with the wall there to kind of just give some protection to anybody who follows them. It was really solid play. Yeah, but we're looking at this replay right here. I think this is where Jelly Squids first gets the cap. Kind of a really back and forth. We see Red with the Kraken, unable to actually get Diamond here. I thought that was a clean kill, but you yeah. Know? <laughs> if if I'm Red, I'm saying money back on that one, man. Oh my gosh, I I would have been <laughs> livid to be honest with you. Yeah, but we're just seeing this cost con wow constant back and forth between these two teams. It was so even, and even when what when Jelly Squid got their first lockout, you see here Biscuit Factory able to push back in. So you know, no one really able to have that sustained push, have that lockout situation throughout this whole game. No, both teams played their uh, disadvantage super well, uh, and you know they used their strikes incredibly i mean that was kind of the number one reason why it, the game was so long and so drawn out uh were those triple strikes uh from both ready and from i'm oh my god i, I think not it was nato diamond. It, it was diamond, diamond. yes, yes. <laughs> oh my god my brain is fried today dude <laughs> <laughs> well as we go on to tc we are you thinking we're gonna see that leader again i know it's kind of a tougher close court more close quarter situation but you know, leader is strong, and the players of it are very dedicated. What do you think? Do you think we're going to see the leader on uh, TC Inc. plot? I think they might go to the Zeko Finn. I might. I think we were going to see the two Zeko Fins, maybe. Uh, that might just be me being a bit copious. But, you know, I think Tri Strikes is really good on TC Inc. plot, just for, like, the GG Strikes. But also, if you're pushing, to push into Bats, right? Bats control is so important on this map mode when you're pushing. Yeah, it's absolutely massive. And the wall from the ZF Charger can also help out a lot with that. My only question is, are we going to see a Charger at all if they don't go uh, leader on this? Because Red was playing the 96, and that also has a wall. Do you want to double up on a wall, especially on tower control? I mean, we they did it for the last game. Tower, maybe not, but you never know. It's, you know, this, this is their call, whatever they go with. I, I think 96 might not be bad on this map either because... Oh, bro, I messed up. I mixed up the leader in the ZF. <laughs> <laughs> you're good, you're good. Oh, we actually see the ball BP. point coming out from Riddy. Okay. Wait, was that a 52 deco? Leader. No. No, C leader is cool, though. I like that. That's a really good adaptation. That's a good change. You have that Kraken <laughs> as well, and you can go in, and now you provide jumps without kind of inting your teammates while using Kraken if you want to go in with it. No, for sure. We're actually going to see the Kraken battle between, I think, Red on the side of Biscuit Factory and Sig on the side of Jelly Squids. Yeah, as we already see Diamond going down relatively early, probably to the Tri Slosher, if I were to guess, as Kitsuki gets picked off by Hamrum and Nato on that stack. <laughs> Chaz gets the trade back onto Nato, though. Uh, as Nato pops the Zipcaster, it's still ready uh, on this platform, having the pack ready 
uh, very close, at least, on this defense. They're going to pop it immediately to try and get some picks here. Diamond popping the strikes out. Going to have to back off from this Kraken, though. Red on that Kraken, getting a pick onto tower, preventing the push. And now Tess is, uh, is going to take a lot of map control here. Now it's just Sig left in mid. Now we actually saw that Kraken just following each other. Sig goes down through the tri slasher, and this is Biscuit's factory's chance to push up here. Yeah, it's looking like they're going to get at least a little bit of the checkpoint out of the way. It's just a question of how much, especially with those tri strikes on the side of Jelly Squids, when are they going to uh, use them for this defense, if at all? Looks like it's going to be right now, but <laughs> Red is going to pop that crack, and let's see how much uh, you know space he can control there. Two members of Biscuit Factor do go down. It looks like that might be the end of the push, but Riddy has this jetpack. Uh, that's going to mean a lot of jumps for the side of Biscuit Factory. Everyone is back in. Red is in bats, camping the jump as well. Riddy dodges the Zooka shot, and Kitsuki also gets a Zooka pick of their own onto Sig, who dropped uh, on the right. Biscuit Factory's push is still going. They're already on checkpoint two, and they have two players in bats. Yeah, I think the biggest play there was Riddy being in that ancient, having those jumps to the recall, but now two down on the side of Biscuit Factory. Jelly Squids really needs to clear out their bats, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Yeah, looking uh, pretty solid for them. They're going to pop these tri strikes to force the two members of Biscuit Factory to make a decision here. Going to get the pick onto Kitsuki, and now it's red isolated in that bottom left. It looks like Riddy and Tess are going to both rotate over to make sure that they're not going to get picked in isolation, but Nato <laughs> still gets one onto Tess, getting a second one onto uh, under uh, Hamrum, or no, onto... That's, I think that's red. <laughs> Bro, I can read, I swear. <laughs> but no. Diamond trades him out at the, in the end there. Nato's still here. Uh, just jumping back into right stacks, just painting up for that. Uh, Zipcaster, which they're very close to. Hamrum gets a Zooka pick, and now it's Jelly Squid's turn to kind of go on the offensive with Sig positioned pretty aggressively here. For sure. And something I just noticed, I don't know how I just noticed, this happened last game too, but on the side of Jelly Switch, they're actually running no cooler here. They're hoping that just being able to play a regular game without cooler being able to push in is going to help them here. We see Sig on the Kraken, the Kraken battle between Red and Sig right now. <laughs> yeah, man. Back to the cooler. Oh my god, wait. Jelly Squids is still going. Diamond is just riding the tower. Nato's here to kind of back it up as well. Maybe get a pick or two. No, they're just going to stay a lot, uh, back off and live another day. But oh, never mind. They're zipping in. Okay, they're getting... Oh, none. Unfortunate. That little bit of map geometry on the ramp there protecting Tess really well. <laughs> back to your cooler point, though. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I didn't notice it either. We've kind of come to just expect a cooler on every single comp uh, with how... Uh, com common it's been. No, for sure. <laughs> we actually just see kind of a scrap in mid right now. The Zuka coming out almost, almost got Diamond right there. But Diamond just trying to play safe. I think they're trying to find a uh, where to use their tri strikes to push their team in. Yeah, and it looks like they're just gonna hold them for when more members are up. And they're gonna get some. They're gonna get some picks here. It's just ready on their own in the bottom right. They're not gonna be able to get anything off of it with two players from Jelly Squids uh, pinching them there. As Nato pops the Zipcaster, getting the pick onto Tess, and Sig is already in with the Kraken. And gonna make some space for Nato on on this O-Rush, who makes some more space for the rest of Jelly Squids to push in a little bit. But they have two on Tower. Hammer on popping the Zuka is gonna be huge for uh, maintaining control of bats as well as these double strikes. However, Riddy is still up there, and Tess. Uh, gets a pick onto a member of Jelly Squids. However, three down, it's just Riddy left on Biscuit Factory. And now it's <laughs> Jelly Squids turn to keep pushing and take the lead with only 25 seconds remaining. Yeah, and I think that was huge that they were able to break off this checkpoint. And they're still pushing the tower, actually. One down, three down for the side of Biscuit wow. Factory. And I think that's the checkpoint going down here. Yeah, it looks like it might even be a KO if Sig can stay on the tower. Those are these Kraken nerfs coming through, if you remember talking about them. Uh, just staying on through any and all kinds of cheese. But Jelly Squids is going to get the wipe out and KO as an answer back in map two. We are going all the way on the Clamblet Scorch Gorge. I was about to say that bomb double might come in clutch, but nope. Tower mo momentum had other, other things to say. <laughs> Well, that's something that you always have to take account of, you know, if you stop them, they're one point behind, but they're still riding that tower, you know, it's not stuck on any checkpoints or anything, you've got to just get on it ASAP or else that tower is still going to take lead. As we look into the replay here, this is a full scrap in mid, 24-7, and this Zipcaster from NATO is huge, by the way, getting two unreal plays to get Jelly Squids back in.
No, for sure. And, you know, this the beginning of this game, and I, I'd say towards the middle, it was such a strap in mid. No one really taking advantage, but in the end, Jelly Squid's able to string, like, a very big stagger onto Biscuit Factory to keep their push up. You see here, just ready on the tower <laughs> and gets taken down there. Yeah, really doing as much as they could. Uh, but it just wasn't enough to prevent Jelly Squids from taking the KO and the win on to that tower control map. Now we're going to go over to Biscuit Factory. Or Biscuit Factory. It's right over Scorch Gorge. Uh, we're going to go over to Clan Blitz on Scorch Gorge. Um, oh, we saw Double Kraken in the last map. Do you think we're going to see it now, even with these Kraken changes, Rice? Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm going to be honest. I think red might just be super comfortable with the 96 and i think they might just pick it at least for red i think the at least the sea leader was more of maybe that tower control pick i'm not again i i'm not too familiar with the the sick player and they're not a i assume from the tag not a regular member of jelly squids but you know maybe they go back to the v leader for the mm -hmm. mine and the Waybreaker. Or the leader is good at shutting or, down that aggression. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm not too sure. Custom leader, I think can be strong here. It just depends on personal preference. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see it as we load into map three. We're on this. <laughs> but like we said, Clan Blitz on Scorch Gorge. Let's take a look at what we're running with. What? Double shot not? Pencil? I guess we're seeing no Krakens, but Red actually going to that Nautilus, I think that's a really good pick into this comp, especially with Nato being such a threat on that Octo Rush. Jelly Squids has a cooler now. I shouldn't be surprised that, you know, that the meta weapons are being used, but like, based on the whole set, we haven't seen that many of them. What? Yeah, I can see getting a pick there. Power of the pencil we see here, and Biscuit Factory kind of has to start retreating, but Red gets a pick and it might get a second one. That's oh a my what? No way! It's huge Zuka from Riddy as well as Red getting a couple of picks of their own. Uh, it looks like they're gonna be on the offensive now, popping this rain, popping another Zuka from Kitsuki. Uh, they're gonna look for some more here. However, NATO on the Zipcast is gonna delay for as long as they possibly can. It's gonna be for a, quite a while. Basically, sh completely shutting down the push of Biscuit Factory there. And now we set back to a more neutral game state, not quite uh, what it normally is. No, for sure, but Riddy, I think that was Riddy that went down there. Two go down, both the shots down on Biscuit Factory, and I think this is Jelly's place. And to start pushing up, and we see that uh -oh. too. Oh, that second shot of the Zuka. You always got to account for all three uh, hitboxes of it. Just to make sure you don't get randomly sniped around the corner. As we see multiple picks coming out uh, from both teams' Zookas. And yeah, we're kind of just back to neutral. Um, you know, we have Riddy all oh, getting shut down by Nato and Sig there. What a great tag team with that chip damage as well. Something that we'll probably see quite a lot with the pencil mixed with the Octobrush, providing a ton of paint for it to get in and some solid chip damage. Let's see. Can. Nato's got seven clams here. They might try and go for a power claim here before they start fighting again, just so they don't lose seven. Uh, that's That might be. But the rain comes out from red, and another Zuka pick. They're going to go for a second one here onto Nato, who pops the Ziv caster just to survive, and is going to stall even longer and stay alive for quite a while. Oh my goodness. Uh, but Riddy here with the Zuka, unable to really get a pick, but Nato does go down after the Zipcasters. Two going down from Hamran's Zuka, and it's just Riddy on the shot there, but gets the pick on Diamond, and gets the third one onto the Octo Rush there. Yeah, that trade is huge for Riddy as well, because they have cooler. <laughs> and, but it's not going to amount to that much, because Sig is still up for Jelly Squids. They're going to be able to provide so many jumps and so much paint that it really is generally an advantage for uh, Jelly Squid still. However, Kitsuki gets a massive pick with that Zuka onto, I believe that was Tess, uh, way in the deep back. Uh, well, no, wait. Yeah, no, Tess is on their team. Uh, I lied. I'm great at misinformation. Onto Diamond. Uh, and that enables Biscuit Factory to get all the way in and score 57. This is our first score of the game at two minutes remaining. 
Yeah, and that's gonna be a pretty tough score to beat for Jelly Squids. That's two power clams and two mini clams if they want to take the lead here. But you know, for Biscuit Factory, as I say, they have the Zooka just shooting it across the map. Almost gets the pencil there, but you know, they'll take that one down situation. Yeah, I had to hold my breath there for a minute. I thought they were going to get the pick with that Zooka, uh, but it, it didn't end up being quite so. Uh, getting two picks in return, though, is Biscuit Factory, and now they're going to try and position themselves uh, to maintain control of this mid. Possibly, if they get some more picks, they're going to go for another push, but Riddy is going to go down to Nato on that Octobrush and, you know, take some space for Jelly Squids to try and get something going here. They have three specials to work with. Let's see what they can do. Oh, we see Nato with the Zipcaster, who unfortunately gets picked off there. Diamond uses the tri strikes, but no one really able to push it, push forward into the space the strikes gave them. Yeah, not not enough picks coming from uh, Nato Zipcaster, and same thing with the tri Zuka. Uh, that's just kind of how it goes. You want to be able to get some picks and some mana advantage. You don't only want to run in with these strikes. It can definitely work in your favor, but you just want that guarantee. Uh, but NATO is sitting on this high ground still with the Zipcaster pop. They're going to be getting aggressive, trying to stay alive, forcing all of Biscuit Factory to rotate back to deal with them. It's going to create so much space for Jelly Squids here. They have a power climb. They can jump another one if they uh, so choose. Let's see what they can do in this last 20 seconds in overtime. Yeah, but the Zuka coming out from Riddy takes down NATO. Almost gets a second one here, but... Jelly Squids, they have a couple 15 seconds here. There's not a lot of time, but they need to try to get to that elbow. Mm, that is true. They're going to need to get through all of this. Uh, they're so close to so many specials on Biscuit Factory as well. They're going to need to go now with these strikes. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. The Zipcaster from NATO is being popped, but Riddy here is stalling so much on this pillow. <laughs> Tess here as well. It's Hamram with seven in the back, though. Can they get a power clam to try and score? They are going to. This game is extended, but for how long can it be? Hamram coming in with another power clam. They just need two more clams to take this game three. Hamram getting another pick onto the Nautilus on a red. Hamram getting another. It's tied right now. We just need one more clam from the side of Jelly Squids. Can they do it? Nato comes in and takes the lead. Oh, no way. Oh, my God. My goodness. What a well played I, overtime. What an overtime play. I think they were the opponents were or for. Wow. What am I trying to say? <laughs> I think for Biscuit Factory, they were so focused on that right elbow. Someone took that left right flank and was able to score that first power clam for Jelly Squids. Yeah, I think it was Hamrum. That was really good. Oh my god, just taking advantage of, you know, the strikes and the Zipcaster creating so much of a distraction, like they have all game. Really well done, and these Zookas come in clutch, like fully shutting down Biscuit Factory's aggression like we saw in the replay. But going back to the OT for a second, Hamrum's uh, got so much value out of just staying alive and you know just looking for clams got two picks as well in the back line there really well played from them and that enabled jelly squids to hold on for just enough time to get uh cl extra clams in from nato to take that game well done amazing overtime from jelly squids yeah an amazing overtime play and i think you, we can see here nato with that last clam Barely getting it in, and the win going to Jelly Squids. Jelly Squids will be progressing through the winner side of the bracket, but Biscuit Factory, they're not out yet. They're still in the loser side, and you know, they can definitely make a comeback here. Yeah, let's see. Who is Jelly Squids going to face off against next? It looks like it's going to be Silly Squids and Odd Octos. Uh, definitely a very strong team based on the seeding here. They are seed number three. Uh, it's going to be an uphill battle for Jelly Squids for sure, but if they proved anything from us from this last set, uh, they are definitely up to the challenge. No, definitely. And I think we have our next set ready already. Uh, okay, I think we're going to take a quick break just to set everything up for you guys, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back with round two.
Hello and welcome back to Switch Junction. I believe this is 66. Switch Junction 66. I am Rice and I'm here with my co-commentator Sig. Bring us into our set right now. Yeah, for you right now, we got Kraken United versus Beak Blast. We're going to start off on Raymaker Museum D'Alfonsino. Man, I'm excited. I can't wait. That first set was really good. I can't wait to see what this next one brings. You know, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, maybe we go to the full distance again. But yes, Kraken United versus Beak Blast. Will we see a Kraken on Kraken United? Who knows? But Beak maybe. Blast, I love their name. I love the icon they have. It's two cannon in their Oh, no icon. way. Yeah, it's a two cannon in their icon. Oh, that's legendary. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Oh my god. Can't get over that. All right, well, Rainmaker Museum, um, how are we feeling? Rainmaker Museum, I think I th this is an interesting map mode. It's a very common one that we'll see. <laughs> I think what we should be expecting is a bunch of Zookas and coolers. But if I'm being realistic here, you know, I looking at their rosters from Kraken United, I saw Adapt. I saw Twice, who is a 52 one trick, and Keto, who's a wiper one trick. So we might see those weapons coming out. Well, it's not quite the wiper, but we do see a stamper, and we also see 52s on both sides, uh, like you predicted. But I want to highlight real quick is that a vanilla jet sculpture from Sneevo? Vanilla jet sculpture is real with the torpedo and vacuum. Vacuum being. Kind of a controversial special right now after Chara's recent video about um, just them talking about the usefulness of um, vacuum. But let's not talk about that. Jelly with this long plank seems to get picked off from the head. It and this is just going to be a free checkpoint for Kraken United. Yeah, a really great plays from them already. <laughs> Super aggressive off the bat, uh, putting B class on the back foot. However, B class are going to get the pop here. Can they get anything else to possibly get something going here? Uh, they're going to have to deal with twice in this uh, mid area, and they're going to have to deal with both Keto and Sneevo. Sneevo's backing Jelly already, enabling Keto to take this amazing fight. And also, Sneevo got the back shot onto uh, a member of B class as twice manages to pick up the Rainmaker re here real quick to kind of just lock Beak Blast down to, you know, their plat. Uh, we see the Zipcaster coming out from Keto, trying to get that chip damage in, trying to just be that distraction their opponents don't want. Gets recalled, but um, actually gets taken down, and that's two down for the side of Kraken United. Yeah, that Blaster pick on the Rainmaker is going to be pretty big, uh, as well as two members going down for the cost of zero. Make that three for zero uh, on the side of Kraken United. Uh, it's going to mean Beak Blast is able to get this checkpoint. Can they deal with Peyton on this right side, though? It's not going to look like it quite yet, but Jelly and uh, the shot player are moving up pretty far. Going to make a ton of space for this Rainmaker to grab checkpoint. It's up to a Namal and $5 footlong to possibly get the pop here. They're going to run head first in the back and take that lead, but Keto's right there to shut it down before it gets too out of hand. Uh, and it's just Jelly remaining in... Uh, in mid, gonna go down to twice here in the duel of the 52s. Uh, but you know what? If I'm Beak Blast, I'm taking that lead. Yeah, for sure. And twice catching that sneaky shark. But I get poked out from the screen faster. Five dollars foot long. What a name. Outstanding name. We, we have some legendary names and profile pictures in this lobby. Uh, as five dollar foot long gets really aggressive, gets a double on the AOE of the range blaster. It's just the Rainmaker left, and they're gonna go down to Jelly as well as the jump from Keto too. Beak Blast is maintaining full control of this game so far. Yeah, uh, but we see Sneevo with the Jet Squelcher here, just being such a menace here, playing their max range, uses that vacuum. No one really able to push in to the vacuum to fight with it, but they're just here to stall with it, honestly. Yeah, really good stall so far. Basically, fully presenting Beak Blast's push uh, and even forcing them back a little bit with that uh, with that Inkvac shot. However, it's not going to be enough to fully stop the push in this tracks as Beak Blast is right up here on Spinner going forward again. Let's see if they can get any more going or if uh, Kraken United is going to be able to get some picks. As I say that, though, Twice is going to get super aggressive pick pick up Jelly, and so is Sneevo. Sneevo is going to get the Rainmaker there. It's just two members left. Make that one of Beak Blast as they provide a jump to Jelly. Uh, but there are three members up on Kraken United. Jelly is getting so aggressive here, playing super well. Getting another pick onto Twice. It looks like they're making everything happen for Beak Blast right now, and that's 
Oh my god, $5 footlong is also getting aggressive now too with that wave breaker. Oh, this might be an even further push for V-Blast. Yeah, but it gets shut down from that vacuum, but 34 is not an easy lead to uh, be on this map. We just see Jelly holding so much space with that 52 gal and its wall. Man, I should pick a 52 gal. This is... <laughs> this weapon's strong. They are really good at this too. Oh my god, Jelly getting another pick and yet another- How are they still alive? They're pushing the Raymaker to 27! What is happening? Beak Blast still hasn't left the flat of Kraken United. They're still going. Contesting this pop is Jelly again. Back up thanks to that cooler that they got. Uh, and Beak Blast is still pushing it down to 19. <laughs> what is going on? I'm so confused. <laughs> and just look at that positioning from $5 Footlong. They're stalling for so much? long. Oh, they get finally get taken down by twice. But what a stall from $5 Footlong and Jelly on the side of Beak Blast. And, you know, Hacken United is stuck on the plat. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they've left their spawn for the past minute and a half of this game. They're going to need to make something happen and make it happen fast if they want any chance to stay in the game. <laughs> it looks like Steve and Twice are going to pop their specials here. They're going to have to deal with $5 Footlong, who falls back. And now it's just Keto Zip online. No only, no picks, only a trade going in favor, uh, and maybe a pick in favor of Kraken United. Make that two. They're going to need to pick up the Raymaker right now, and then they're going to have to stay alive with it for the whole 60 seconds of overtime if they want a real chance. But with $5 Footlong here getting so aggressive, it's looking like it's not going to happen. The game is over now. What a game from uh, Beak Blast. You know, they, it looked really shaky at the beginning while Kraken United pushed really fast. But, you know, they find, they were able to stabilize towards the middle of the game and kind of just live in the opponent's dinner for the longest time. Oh, somebody had a Slapfish shirt on? <laughs> that is quite unfortunate. That is... <laughs> that uh -oh. is quite unfortunate, but you cannot fix that, you know... Every time I play a tournament during Splatfest, I first thing I say when we get into the PB is the Splatfest T. But oh yeah, you gotta remove that or get your abilities. If you're running a single weapon, you gotta get those abilities on your Splatfest T just so you don't accidentally make this kind of mistake. Uh, you know, it kind of it kind of bit them in the side a little bit here. Uh, it was okay. It was Jelly. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Je jelly kind of popped up with the Splat FST. Maybe if you're Jelly, you don't, like... You don't care you about don't the Splat FST. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe you don't switch it for this game. I mean, you kind of popped off there, making so much space for your team. And now, I mean, space is everything on zones. I, I think we might... I think I think Jelly might not switch. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But moving on from that first game, amazing first game from Beak Blast with just being aggressive and also just being able to hold the space for so long. And that's even more important for splat zones. And on Mako Mart, I am scared of $5 foot long here. <laughs> oh no, I'm terrified. All those ledges around stacks and playing in breakfast, dude. Oh, and not even to mention all the ledges when you're trying to get back in. It's going to be a nightmare fighting <laughs> the range blaster in this comp. Oh no. It's going to be a, quite a tough battle for Kraken United on this one. For sure, but also, this is a really good stamper map. Keto, if Keto keeps that stamper, or even a wiper, both of the swords are really strong on this map, and it really just, I think, depends on how the rest of the team plays around the plays, the plays that these players are doing. Yeah, let's take a look and see what kind of comps we're running. We have a junior now. Okay, i like to see it. And we're running back the same comp from uh, Beak Blast. Okay, we're, we're kind of cooking right now. Um, yeah. I, I really enjoy seeing the V Junior here. It, it got a buff recently with the crit spots taking some less damage, and V Junior honestly is a strong is this pretty strong weapon as is with that added ink tank and all the bombs it can get. Whoa, it doesn't really matter if the bubble can't even get deployed here. Five dollar foot long chasing down twice here. Twice deploying the wall, able to survive. And I think I saw opening gambit on Jelly. Uh huh? aggressive with that 52 gal trying to just run it down and get as much speed as they can from that gambit oh the opening gambit tech 
That's kind of that's kind of sick. I can't lie. And right now they're taking advantage of it pretty well. Jelly and five dollar foot long already <laughs> taken so much space around freezer here, forcing all of Kraken United into this left corner of the map. However, they do have three specials. Let's see if they can get any value off them. First off, the vac pop on that left side is going to be running with Keto uh, behind it. And Jelly and <laughs> Jelly finding the flank, getting a pick, and however getting traded. But Peyton's here neutralizing the zone. Gonna probably solo flip it at this point. It's, they're gonna do so. And with that bubble, Snevo and uh, Twice are gonna get in. And now it's zone favor <laughs> in Kraken United. Yeah, and something to keep in note of for Kraken United is they actually switched off the cooler option for that junior with Big Bubbler. So they're not gonna have that cooler to push back in. Two down on the side of uh, Kraken United, and that bubble just trying to stall as much time and Jelly with this long flank. <laughs> oh my god. Jelly's been put in work with all these long flanks, but we can't discredit any anything that Enamel especially has been doing on this pencil, being so consistent, applying all this paint for Jelly and the rest of uh, Peak Blast to take advantage of perfectly. As we see, the shot is in a great position to punish any, you know, ill-informed drops on this right-hand side of the map. And now $5 Footlong is here to reinforce the position. No, for sure. But I think uh, Kraken United trying to push through this left side. We see the vacuum and the killer whale coming out. The shot trades the 52 gal and it's just Nevo on that jet sculpture. Oh wow, and Sneevo's gonna be pushed way back. It looks like it might be another KO in favor of Beak Blast. Uh, let's see if they can hold on for these last five points. It looks like they're gonna be able to as all of uh, Kraken United rushes to that bottom right fridge area. And that's gonna be another KO, or that's gonna be a, a KO on map two for Beak Blast and they're gonna take the set 2-0. Yeah, and Beak Blast, they played so well. Like we, we kept talking about Jelly, yes. Jelly was the one making the plays, but the rest of their team was following up with Jelly. Jelly being aggressive gave the rest of their team to kind of just, hey, let me just go the other direction and help Jelly here. Yeah, uh, they they played really well around Jelly and around five dollar foot long. Really solid work from Enamel and the shot player. Man, I wish I could read Japanese right now. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> Oh, it's Adapt. Wait, I thought Adapt was on Kraken United. Kraken United. Yeah. We'll figure it <laughs> out. We'll ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, well, for those, anyways. <laughs> for those who didn't hear Jirayan in the streamer voice, uh, thank you, Jirayan, for the information. But Kraken United used to be a old team, and I guess they're coming back for one tournament today in Squid Junction to maybe just show off what they've got. <laughs> yeah, and this is certainly not all they've got. They've got a whole loser's bracket run ahead of them. Uh, we'll be seeing them pretty soon. Meanwhile, Beak Blast are going to have to take on the winner of Duck Motif and Honu. It looks like Duck Motif uh, took that 2-0. That's going to be kind of a fire set. I can't lie. No, definitely. That will be quite an intense set. Um, but, you know, we, as you said, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Tracking <laughs> United still has a loser's run to d run option to do and they're actually gonna be playing the team we just commentated last set biscuit factory oh okay we're we're up and down the roster with bangers today well we'll be back with our next banger of a set after this real quick break
Hello everybody, welcome back to Squid Junction 66. We have another absolute barn burner of a match coming up. We have Make-A-Wish versus Essence Rice. How are you feeling about this set? Dude, this set, I think, will be the... M I don't know what will beat that first set, honestly, because the, the first set, you know, it, it was only the first set, there weren't that many stakes, but this set definitely has higher stakes to it. Whoever wins here makes it to semifinals. But 11 11 Make a Wish versus Essence. Both these teams have been established teams for a hot minute now. Yeah, we have some very, very strong players uh, coming into this. Right now, we've got uh, on the side of Make a Wish, we've got Kabi, Venoct, Candy, and Aang. Uh, and on the side of Essence, we have uh, Ivy Wumi, Sune, Nilla, and Scotty. So. We, we have some heavy hitters uh, queued up for this one today. Yeah, I personally have had the pleasure to play with Kabi and against Kabi multiple times. And if you've ever been beamed by a squeezer, just imagine that from Kabi, but just every single fight you're in. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that, dude, I, I tried picking up that weapon earlier, like, this month. I don't know how y'all do it. That is, like, the one weapon that is, like so impossibly hard for me to play <laughs> it's so good though too this is essence's ltc team oh wow okay so we will be seeing essence uh for you know in about two weeks from now as well at low tide city so this is gonna be their ltc roster um let's see what we're running with on this uh clamwood's crabble capital I like that hyped up copy squeezer and we're just seeing copy on end zap now oh the zap bot <laughs> oh, double special charge. No. <laughs> no, there's also two players with the swap SD on for Essence. <laughs> but I digress. So we move. Uh, we ball. Uh, oh, no, we do not ball. Candy? Candy? Candy, candy are you Earth to Candy? Oh. oh, well. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, um. Well, we're going back uh, to the <laughs> lobby. <laughs> um, okay. The room broke a little bit. Just Class a touch. Cl classic Splatfest, you know? Classic yep. tournament ran during Splatfest. The network never works. <laughs> oh, no, it's flawless. Nintendo is just a small indie game company. And they, they work so hard to keep these servers up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but for real, though, we have so many players on during Splatfest. It's, so, it's hard to run stuff sometimes just with how many people are on. Like online at once, it's got to be in you know six digits probably. No, most likely. But as we, I guess, get the room back in, um, I'm bad at that. that's like hundred thousand people. <laughs> that that might be a little bit high, but still, <laughs> the point stands. <laughs> but let's talk about this map mode that they went into. They readied up this room so fast, we had no time to talk about this. Crab leg clam blitz. With the new Kraken nerfs, it's extremely tough to push in here. We saw this map being probably one of the most Kraken cheesed map, and for good reason. Yeah, it is very difficult to get any kind of push going because your options are an isolated jump onto the left side of the platform, which is still on the low ground compared to the rest of the platform. You have a ramp that is being watched by literally everybody on the other team. Uh, so good luck if you don't have walls and strikes and all this other stuff or picks to get in and then your third option is you have a great that is probably going to be watched by some kind of backline or a trizuka weapon or a crab tech yep and you know that great part is the most important thing you can have control of whether you're on offense or defense that gives you that high ground to fight on compared to that you know, that ramp, right? That ramp, just that low oh. ground. Just having to walk in there and just get beaten by, like, an anchor or something. <laughs> Those options, I will say, they, they are not fun to fight if you are just trying to face check them. Uh, I do not recommend that for anybody. <laughs> you will get beamed. You will get smoked. And you will get tilted. But <laughs> we're running it back. Can we talk about... I think I saw a Stamper and Dually and a BP on one team. Well, am I correct in seeing that, or...? Yes, that was, I believe, on Make-A-Wish. They had a Ballpoint, Enzap, a Stamper, and Splat Duelies. And on the side of Essence, I think they also ran a double midline comp with 
the Nautilus and the Machine Neo. Oh, Machine Neo. Now I get I get Machine is lame or whatever. It's AOE. It used to be so meta and so good. But man, still seeing so Machine in this meta, I I know it's still good. But like <laughs> seeing Machine in this meta is really cool. It's like it's like seeing Lightning McQueen still competing in races when he's like 60. You know. <laughs> no, for sure. And actually, that wasn't a Nullis. It was actually a double bucket comp instead. Oh, okay. I'm even more with it now. I love V-Bucket. Let's go. All right. <laughs> yeah, but we see Candy here pushing aggressively, but Nilla spots them out really quick. And what did Scotty go down to? What? Oh, it looks like it's just going to be make a wish. Just kind of running the show so far, getting a ton of picks. Only one traded back. Uh, in favor of uh, Essence, but it's not going to be quite, it's going to be enough to stall out this push, and with Ivy Wumi on this uh, crab tank, going to create a ton of space for the rest of Essence to get back in here, getting a pick as well, and Candy is going to have to go huge here. Gets one, but not quite the rest, as Venox is popping the Zipcaster just to stay alive and stall out even more, uh, just preventing Essence from getting pushed much further, even though they go down in the process. Yeah, I think what's going to be really interesting is this dually battle between Candy and IB Wumi. They're both using the Crab Tank one as well, so Crab Tanks for both sides are going to have a lot of hold power on this map. Oh, as the Crab Tank goes down there, not even getting a chance to really utilize it uh, super well. But with the cooler back up, they're just going to be about two seconds of charge away. As IB Wumi pops their Crab, I uh, going to get a pick, and that's going to be a lot of uh, ability to get in, especially with the strike. Sune gets a power claim in, and Nilla's going to get two more, as well as some more from uh, Ibi, from the likes of Ibi Wume and Sune. Uh, they're going to be playing a pretty aggressive here just to try and hold this position. Uh, Nilla doesn't quite get any, but Scotty here with the Zuka is going to try and snipe out this jetpack. Not going to get the jetpack, but is going to get candy instead and mark two of the other members of Make-A-Wish. Uh, it looks like Essence is in a pretty good spot here with another power claim queued up. No, for sure. And they, the most important thing about that push, too, is yes, the push did go down, but they still have all this map control in mid. They're still pushing up here. We see Ivy Wumi trying to do a bit of a sneaky play, but Venok able to shut that down. Uh, Venok with that Zipcaster, really solid stuff. Uh, however, it's not looking like it's going to bode well as they get traded and Scotty gets another pick as Ibi Wumi is already back to being a pain on this on these greats with the crab tank. Uh, let's see how much more they can get. If they get another picker, I think that that's grounds for uh, Essence scoring again. Let's see if they can quite get it. It looks like we're going to get a dually trade instead, though, and Nilla has these strikes ready. Uh, it looks like we might wait to see another special here before anything gets popped for sure. Kabi is going to pop that cooler. Might go down to the strikes here and does trying to pick up their own cooler. Unfortunate. But they got the cooler up. That's the important part. <laughs> oh, and we see all these jumps here. Oh, my <laughs> God. What happened there? Wait, when when did they get in there? I think I'm that confused. Was, I, I think Ivy Wumi was just stalling the spawn. Oh. And we saw some decent. Thank you. <laughs> we love to see it. Anyways, <laughs> looks like um, Essence is going to get another push off. They're going to get another power clamp along with that. And now Ibi Wumi is just going to pop this crab tank to try and stay alive against Candy here. Going to uh, have some teammates help to get traded. Now Aang is going to be on this jetpack. Can they get the pick onto Scotty? No, not quite. But they're going to stay alive for quite a while. Get the pick onto Ibi Wumi almost with a lot of chip damage left out onto them. Going to get uh, picked off themselves, though, on their pack recall. Uh, at, but, you know, Essence still hasn't pushed up super far. They haven't taken advantage of the two picks they have gotten quite yet, but that looks like it's about to change as Sune has seven clams here. Yeah, for sure. And they have that cooler down. We see Scotty here with the Zuka. Gets one, tries to get a second one, unable to, but that's so much space. But, you know, Candy going down and... Uh, the zap going down, this is going to be a lot of space for Essence here. Yeah, Wumi, again, with this crab tank on this on the top right, on the greats, is making so much space, controlling so much of the map for Essence here. It's going to enable them to get another push going in down almost uh, 25 points here. They're going to get a ton of score, and Sunai still has this power clamp for 
another push, possibly another sneaky jump if they can manage it, but it looks like it's not going to quite happen. The Scotty goes down, and the rest of Essence is going to be pushed back a little bit as it's finally make a wishes turn to play the game let's see what they can get going here with this crab tank from candy on the top left then octo is also poking out really well getting the pick onto wumi as they drop trying to make something happen on the top uh, on the right side of the map. Kabi, oh, misses the clam, but Venoct is here just to make some space to try and enable uh, the rest of Mega Wish to possibly grab it. Not quite going to happen with the strikes that Nil is popping, uh, but they still have all of overtime to try and make something happen. And Egg getting the pick on Asune is the first part of that. Venoct is here getting aggressive, but they're going to have to deal with Scotty, Scotty on this machine and Wumi on this duelies. Uh, Scotty's Zuka doesn't get anything, but. <laughs> but they're going to get picked, and that's going to enable Make-A-Wish to pop this barrier. Yeah, but not a lot of follow-up here, and it's just Kabi left on this end zap, trying to scatter for whatever clams they can get, but just getting scouted out by this pencil here. Yeah, what a good, solid defense. I mean, you, you let up a couple points, but you have enough of a lead to where it doesn't matter. Really solid defense at the end there from Essence, and... Great offense, great maintaining the pressure uh, applied throughout the whole game there. In reality, Make-A-Wish didn't really have that much opportunity to uh, get something going, and it kind of bit them in the butt. No, for sure. And I think what really... I think we might see this in the... Oh, this was the DC. Um, moving on from that DC. But, you know, throughout this game, I think what Essence did such a good job is... Whenever they had any space, they didn't let go. We saw like, oh, Wumi got that sneaking jump in. But the reason why Wumi was there is because they weren't willing to give up the space they made. Yeah, you can see here, they got that super jump here. They were camping jumps. They only oh. got one power clam score there. But, you know, Wumi still here gets that trade. And, you know, that just held so much space for the rest of Essence. Okay, it seems like we're actually having some problems in the lobby. Yeah. I'm I'm a little concerned, but you know, let's keep looking at this replay. Let's think about that later. But yeah, just that one score and a couple clams for uh, make a wish early on. And <laughs> I guess we're looking back at this replay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and can we talk about really quickly how oppressive the crab tanks were from Ibu Wumi on that top right? They controlled so much space uh, and enabled so much for Essence to kind of take advantage of, really just freeing up a lot of that plat for Essence to uh, push up and get the score so far down. Really no, solid stuff. No, definitely. And like something that you need to keep in mind is that, you know, Essence with that crab tank at the top, you know, that, that crab tank was their anchor at the top. And that let Sune play kind of more aggressive positions on low ground. You know, Sune being a very aggressive charger player, getting away with that because Wumi is there to anchor. Oh, no. It looks like we got booted from the lobby, so we are going to have, um, quite possibly, some Splatfest updates for y'all. Uh, this is what you sign up for. This is the production value we get from Dapple Productions. Thank you. Dapple, you're giving us in-game news as well as the tournament that we get to watch. Let's Let's see. What, what's happening? I, I need to see what the halfway point uh, is showing for us. Hold on. Trust me, trust me. Team Bunny wins this, clearly. Oh, no. Uh, team, no, no, no. Team, team Bears Bunny, all team the way, bro. No, 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 no. no. Trust, team Bunny, trust. come on. Come on. No, no, no. Look at that bunny. Look how cute that bunny is. Come okay. on. Okay. And you're seeing the bear cub on the right side? Come on, man. Nah, the bunny's cuter. I don't know what no. you're talking about. Bear cub's adorable. Those little ears. <laughs> sticking up over they're not you know too big they're not you know they're not non-existent you know and okay. the, all the in the big old paws too i love bears okay but what does bears have to do with easter and let's go team bunny no it's so close oh my god oh my god look at that percentage oh man wow dang that is close okay Anyways, back to our regularly scheduled tournament. <laughs> <laughs> back to the tourney. All right, y'all. How are we feeling about Raymaker on Undertow Spillway? Hey, you know, Raymaker on Undertow Spillway, for those who do not know, recently Undertow got a map rework. It did. 
We have a couple new areas of the map. You know, we have an area underneath the snipe. You know, it, it's mid has been widened up. It's been opened up a little bit more. Honestly, at least to me, if the map feels like it flows a lot better here now that those uh, areas have been added, as well as they've removed the uninkable spot, which is a huge uh, buff to Rainmaker I was about in to this say mode. That that uninkable not being there anymore makes that street so much more scrappy. Way more fights happening there. And also just Rainmaker being able to stall. I think definitely that side is a bit your favorite just because you can right side really well on that area. But, you know, it also, like, that side being more scrappy also makes it so defenders can fight more rather than oh, let me just throw bombs and hope they die to that while they go through the slick. That is true. <laughs> you can you can do a ton more. Uh, and so can the Rainmaker, really. You can squid roll bombs. Uh, you can you can move around. The score is going to go down a lot faster in that section of the map. And honestly, the whole of the right side has been really widened up, uh, which leads to a lot more uh, space and options for both teams, but especially that attacking team, you know, you're not kind of just stuck in the Rainmaker Shield blast radius for, you know, trying to get past that checkpoint. No, for sure. And speaking of that mid area, there's been a lot of talk on what that call out is. Me and my friends have been calling it shower. I've seen people call it igloo. Um, those were the main two I've been seeing, but I think shower is a funny one, especially if you just put a sprinkler under it as well. Oh, that's true. That, that's a very silly one. I like that. <laughs> so I, I've heard hell being thrown around a lot, like kind of a more of a Valorant or Counter-Strike-esque uh, call out mm -hmm. that you'll hear a little bit. I've heard tunnel thrown around even. It's not quite so much a tunnel, but I kind of I get where it's coming from. <laughs> call it a ditch. <laughs> it's not quite a ditch either but you know what as long as as long as your team knows what you're talking about you know as long as your team knows what you're calling i don't think there's a wrong answer for the call that is true i hey i am still a believer in calling it shower i think that's funny <laughs> I, I think I, I'm, I'm concerned that some people might not know what that is i i think it's <laughs> I think it's funny when we say the call out, like we've been using it and we're like, guys, I'm going to shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as we load in, let's see if anybody here is going to shower. Uh, we have a ZF charger. Okay. Oh, all right. Ooh. Well, I like it so far. And we have Aang on the BP again. Okay. I prefer ZF, ZF charger here, to be honest. ZF like, charger? Compared to, compared to Sniper Rider? Uh, I agree. Sniper Rider is a little awkward on this map mode, but early pop going to... Uh, I think that's Make-A-Wish, actually, early pop going to Make-A-Wish. Um, but Candy goes down early to that ZF as we were speaking. Yes, yeah, the ZF gets a second pick. Oh, man. Sune got two there. I can't believe that. I thought they were just going to get the one. However, Candy is going to jump back in immediately and get the pick onto, the ra onto Nilla on that Rainmaker. And now Sune is going to have to back up a little bit more. Ibi Wumi is kind of isolated here on this left side. Now, but now if they want to back out, they do have the shower and they also have Nilla and Scotty here. To, to try and make some space for him. Uh, as Nilla is running into three people to try and extend that Rainmaker a little bit more, not quite going to get any points on the board, and Scotty's shutting down Venact on that uh, Zipcaster. Yeah, Scotty doing a good job just holding the space here. Candy with this crab thing comes out, unable to really do too much with it. It's on low ground right now. And yeah, that's a crab tank kind of used there, but we do see Bobby getting a pick there. Yeah, Candy getting super aggressive onto this Trizuka. Can they get a pick? No, not quite. Scotty's going to shut him down before they can get anything going. And get another pick onto Venact with Ibi, Wumi, and Nilla backing them up there. <laughs> now, Make-A-Wish have so much space, they can go for a checkpoint here. It looks like they're going to opt for the left side, while two members of their team are going to try and stall out uh, <laughs> Essence as long as they can on the right. But they're going to get the checkpoint break. Now, let's see if they can get much more. Venact is going to pop the Zipcaster again. Can they get... Uh, anything like pick wise? No, not quite, but they're gonna stall quite a lot. Enough for Candy, Ang, and. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say for Can for them to get their specials and pop them in time for this defense. As Sune gets a huge pick on the Kabi. Rainmaker is gonna reset though, and that means Ma Make a Wish is gonna have to send at least one person back here to try and get this Rainmaker. 
Ooh, and that Inksha gets two pick there on oh. Wumi, and I believe that was Nilla on the end zap. But Kabi here with the end zap close to a cooler might just go play, might play for it. We see it come out, but uh, I believe that's Candy he goes down before that cooler is able to be deployed. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's see. Aang is going to be uh, sitting here with the pack at the ready. They might be able to get that uh, popped kind of soon. Not quite with two members down. They're going to fall back as Scotty gets a little bit aggressive here. But now the cavalry's arrived. Scotty's kind of stuck on their own. And now uh, Essence are in this uh, man up spot, I believe. Or no, sorry. That's make a wish are in the man up but they go three down it's just ang left and ang gets picked off that means essence is going to be able to push way further going down into that newly inkable area going down to a bomb though down at 19 points very uh very solid push uh for the time being as soon and scotty are going to have to play a little bit more conservatively now no for sure and getting that 19 points is huge um we, <laughs> i was doing testing earlier when the map change happened, but getting to that pillow area in that equal area only gets you to 28. So getting past that pillow is very crucial. Yeah, it is. That is <laughs> I didn't know it was that many points. You get nine points by just crossing over a pillow. Yeah, it's crazy. But we see Aang with the inkjet here tries to pick off Wumi, but Wumi able to dodge and starts pushing up top mid now. Yeah, Wumi's getting super aggressive on the Aang here, kind of taking them out of the fight. Uh, gonna get a pick there, uh, or gonna get picked there as well, uh, as Make-A-Wish is gonna take this first tech point. They're gonna try and get something going here. They have all four members up and out the ready. Instant pop, uh, but they have no specials to work with quite yet. It looks like they have the crab all, uh, already popped on this right side. They're gonna force three members to deal with it. Uh, however... Make-A-Wish is going to have to fall back here a little bit, as Essence has three specials that they're willing to pop for with this defense. Yeah, and Venok able to jump out there. I didn't know if they got out. And Scotty here in shower fighting Svenok gets the trade on both sides there. Wow. All right. 40 seconds remaining. Uh, Make-A-Wish is in the man-up situation. It's just no left in this dropped area. There's is a, <laughs> there is a jump. They're hit 50. Uh, Kabi is going to go down, but <laughs> now it's a 3v3 uh, in the spawn of Essence. Can they hold for long enough against Aang in this pack and Candy? This crab is going to come out. The Zuka is too. Uh, Nilla is going to go down getting a little bit aggressive, but now Wumi and Scotty are going to be uh, here in prime position to try and make something happen. However, one of them is going to go down. And the other one's going to have to drop and pop the Zuka here. It's just Sune left being able to deal with something, and they do. They hit a huge shot with just five seconds remaining to shut down that Rainmaker push, and Essence is going to hold on to the 2-0 lead. Yeah, uh, Essence, a bit of a nail-biter there. So close to losing that lead, but as I said, they got it past that pillow. For Make-A-Wish, they only just got to that pillow, and that was the... That was the crucial point where Sune was able to get a good angle, good snipe onto the Rainmaker before they passed it. Yeah, playing Charger on this map, especially looking down that hallway, it's all about getting these good looks on the Rainmaker, just trying to, uh, you know, pick them off before they can uh, just drop the score down too low uh, and make it, you know, a much less comfortable game if you're Essence. Uh, however, they were able to pull through. Sune hit some crucial shots, especially at the beginning of and end of the games. Very solid stuff uh, from Essence the whole way through. For sure. And Make-A-Wish made such a crazy push at the end. Again, I think if Essence didn't get that big of a lead, that would have been the win for Make-A-Wish. <laughs> yeah, it very well could have been. Like, look at this. Huge pick, threading the needle between teammates as well. Very solid stuff. That's going to lead to a 2-0 for Essence. They're going to move on to our top six, guaranteed. Um, and they have another shot at top four here. They're going to have to play the winner of D uh, Duck Beak Blast and Duck Motif. Uh, from Which? the looks of it, I believe Duck Motif has two owed. At yes, this point, that is, yes, that is correct. Duck Motif won 2 0 versus Beak Blast. Essence being that other team that Duck Motif will be playing. And we are going to be transitioning to this other set, but we gotta wait for it. We see Shush 
as the second seed, and we're waiting on the set of silly squids and uh, whatever. What's odd name? octolings? Squid, silly squids or and odd, odd octoling octos versus. I, I believe it's pronounced glyph. Yeah, it is glyph. Uh, I can't wait for to see the winner of this set. Glyph has been on a little. I I would say. Uh, let's take a look at the losers bracket though before we get too ahead of ourselves. Uh, we already have some pretty good stuff here. I am. Oh no. <laughs> I need to I need to clear up my battle five bracket. Uh, but Flop Nation two O Kingdom Bane so far we they're gonna face off against the winner of Jelly Squids and Deep Sea Entities, uh, while Papa's Pizzeria and Auntie are playing in uh, Losers Round Two, as well as uh, Nanku and Prickly Pear Lemonade, as well as Kraken United and Booyah Back. Booyah Back is already up a map, and the winner of that set is gonna play against Legibitequa. Uh, you know I've is been that, seeing I, I've been correctly? I do not know, but I've been seeing this pickup go around. It's, it's I believe Vanessa Lupul's Hornet swag, and I believe fifth gen has been being their fifth player. A uh, very strong pickup. Um, but yeah, I think <laughs> we'll be going to a bit of a break while we wait for that other set in quarterfinals to finish. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Squid Junction sixty six. Splatoon Stronghold, a stronghold for competitive Splatoon, providing resources to long timers and newcomers alike. If you're new to the competitive scene or still figuring out how to join, we have a getting started guide and plenty of other resources to help you in your journey. If you are a seasoned veteran, we still have plenty to offer. You can find and join tournaments as well as participate in our captain forum and find free agents and teams. Our mission is to make competitive Splatoon easily accessible to everyone. So what are you waiting for? Join the Splatoon Stronghold today!
私たちが当時込められているこの山の頂上にいつかの冒険みたいに空の下に立ってどこまでも続く
everyone and welcome back to more squid junction 66 i am rice and i'm here with my co-commentator sig sig bring us in to what we are looking at right now so we've got winner semis for you today we've got shush versus silly squids and odd octos it is best of five our first best of five set of the day uh and because it's best of five and it's so far into bracket uh, we are going to work with a pick band system. So now we have the maps up. We have a pool of seven to choose from, and the two teams get to uh, strike and select the maps that they want to play in the set. So for this set, we're going to be starting off with, it looks like, Tower Control on Hagglefish Market. Indeed. And the two maps that they actually banned. So for the side of Silly Squids, they had banned Clam Blitz Robo Ramen. I cannot disagree. I hate that map mode. <laughs> and... Hey. It's a struggle. <laughs> it is. And for the side of Shush, they actually banned our control Mako Mart. Mako Mart? Mako. I'll call it Mako today. I change it every other day. <laughs> it's like me with Museum, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's things that you can pronounce right four different ways, and you know, <laughs> you don't know what the chat wants you to pronounce right, so you just pray. No, indeed. But going into tower control Hagglefish markets, I think tent control is going to be so important in that second checkpoint. That is the most important checkpoint we have in this game mode. It is. That second checkpoint is huge. If you get past it, pretty likely that you're going to end with a sub 10 score. You can probably clear that third check pretty easy and maybe get a KO going. Uh, but if you don't, you're just going to be stuck on it for a very long time. <laughs> No, for sure. And I, are we gonna start soon? Oh, we are missing someone in the lobby. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I mean, we can stall for a little bit. Wait, wait. Oh, we're gonna, um, we're gonna do some professional yapping here. Yeah, yeah. I love professional yapping. But both these teams having players from the plus server. Um, Shush being having like two, I think, plus one members. Um, but. A very strong roster coming out from Shush. Uh, former members of Nightmare on this team, including Pillu, Joe, and then they have Balloon and Half as the two others. And on the side of Silly Squids and Odd Octos, we have Riku Fan, which is Splat. We have Splat Zero Fan, which is Riku. We have Kites, In Control Beam, and GG's Dan. <laughs> Man, these rosters are stacked. Jeez Louise. All right. <laughs> I can't believe that. Uh, <laughs> some heavy hitters and we're just in semis. No, for sure. Well, these are the two and three seeds. So this will probably be one of our closer matches. I think we finally got our last member into the room. Hopefully we're starting soon, but... um, <laughs> Yay. Oh! Never mind, they changed the bands on us last minute. Huh? Wait, uh, what did they... So apparently, Shush banned Zone's Barnacle instead of Tower Control Mako. Alright, I guess we're not playing Zones. This isn't top level. <laughs> oh no, I'm with it. I'm with it. I see too much Zone. <laughs> see too many Zones only tournaments. Let's, let's give some of the other modes some love here, you know? It's a little bit low on the clan list, but hey, we'll work with it. <laughs> You know? Hey, we can finally play Clam Blitz without dealing with Crack and Cheese. Come on. Hey, that's true. I, we need to see some more of it. I, I, we really need to see some. We've only seen, what, one Clam Blitz game today, I think? Uh, Maybe two. I thought it was two. We saw... I think we've seen two. We need to see some more, you know? It just got changed. <laughs> no, for sure. But, yeah. Heading into Tower Control Hagglefish, we have our two flank routes... We will probably see a bunch of people taking flanks from both teams, but you know, I'm not sure if we'll be seeing a pencil out of Shush unless Pelu is actually gonna be playing pencil today. Oh, Pelu might be, but I think something that is equally possible is we just see like a zap or something maybe. Uh, but we'll see as soon as we load in here. Uh, I'm very curious to see where this is going to go. It is going to be half on the pencil instead of Pelu. And on the side of 
Uh, Silly Squiz and Odd Octos. It's going to be a zap. All right, and double bucket. Yes, the zap and the double bucket, and we see people Who's have to slap Who's best STs? <laughs> Let's go. Add it to the counter. That's four now. That's four today. At five, no, actually, because no, no. Delhi had yeah, one five. on, right? <laughs> yeah, so we got five today so far. Let's see how it goes. So we got some trades to open things up. Coolers up. Beam with the big Zooka. Possibly getting a second. Not quite. But that's going to mean Silly Squids and Odd Octos can take the tower and get another pick. It's just Joe left on the stamper. Going to go down to Beam here. Uh, however, the tower uh, pusher is going to go down to half on that Snipe Rider. And Kite is going to have to duel with that Zooka. Not quite going to find much. However, Beam... Or er, Riku. Splat Zero fan. That's Riku, I think. Can. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> uh, and we're going to reset to a more neutral state. But Silly Squids and Odd Octos have the Zooka ready. And they're going to start pushing the tower again. Ooh, but the counter Zuka coming out from Pelu. Pelu takes one down, takes two down. Can they get this third one? They do get the trade, and that's going to be a delayed wipe for the side of Shush. Really outstanding triple from, well, double and then assist from Pelu in reality, but really made that all happen. Drew three members of uh, Shush, or of Silly Squids and Odd Octos, to that right side of the map and forced out a lot of utility. Got that Zuka pick as well with a force the strikes and got two picks off the drop. Really well played from them. And that's going to enable Shush to kind of get things going here a little bit. However, Beam is going to force their way in. Pops, Papa Zuka going to make a lot of space. Going to go down here. Uh, but Shush still has plenty of control to work with. As I say that, one more goes down. But Joe is here to hold strong as, they pr as the whole team provides a lot of jumps. But these strikes are going to force half off that tower. For sure. And this push from the side of Shush, they're really trying to get to that second checkpoint. As we said earlier in, uh, I guess, the preview, <laughs> um, getting to that second checkpoint means that you have a solid push. And that's three down for the side of uh, Silly Squids. This is Shush's opportunity to start pushing that second checkpoint here. Yeah, they already have so many people in, uh, just in general, in the spawn, in in the base, and the second check. Joe's getting a Zipcaster into the spawn, getting a pick off of it, and staying alive for so long. It looks like uh, Shush is going to get this second checkpoint. As I say that, though, um, a lot of members get picked. It's just Pelu left. They're not going to get the tower, but they're going to push all the way down to 31. That's a sizable lead in favor of Shush. Can Silly Squids and Odd Octos, uh, you know, come back uh, with that? They have 2 minutes and 20 seconds to do so, and they just get a trade to start things off. Definitely, and actually that trade goes in favor of the side of Shush because Pelu still had cooler at the time. We see here Joe gets the pick onto, I believe that's Beam, and they're trying to go for more. Oh! Oh my god, Joe is disgusting on that stamper, really good stuff, and so is Riku on that machine, getting two huge picks there, uh, however it's not going to be enough to fully prevent Shush's push going, uh, as they are going to push this tower up to where the first checkpoint was, and they might be able to get some more, but they're going to have to deal with Kite and Riku uh, getting a little bit aggressive here, as well as Beam, Beam getting a pick uh, onto half, I believe, and getting a, t uh, not half, but uh, Balloon. But it's not going to amount to much. Shush gets past the checkpoint. And now we're looking uh, to see if they can get past the third one. As Joe is in, on the flank on the other side of the map, getting one. Uh, but the tower member goes down to Kite. Kite is pushing this with Beam, getting the full wipeout. And Silly Squiz and Octos have now a minute 20 to make things happen. Now, but Kite really needs help here. Finally gets the recruits from Beam. And I believe that was Riku. But Beam going down early to a burst bomb combo from Joe. Yeah, Beam going down there is not, uh, doesn't bode well for the side of Silly Squids and Odd Octos, but that Zuka does as, as, uh, as Beam gets so many picks. There's a double that goes on the bottom right, but it's not going to be, uh, amount to much as there's a full wipeout in favor of Shush and Pelu just trickshotting that Zuka <laughs> in the 360 off the edge of the map. Doesn't really need it, and the Zuka's going to run out, you know? Joe is going to be just an just a nuisance. <laughs> Uh, underneath this tent. There's not much you can do to deal with it other than maybe roll a bomb. It's going to back off, though, uh, <laughs> so he can pop the Zipcaster, get the pick on the kite, and kind of just be as annoying as possible. Stay alive. Half also gets a pick somehow in the, in the 1v3. Really good for them, and with 19 seconds left, that cooler uh, gets despawned at the perfect time because now Half can start charging that immediately again. No, for sure. And we see two specials on the side of Silly Squids ready. We have the Trash Eggs and the Inkzuka. Cooler gets popped. This is going to be 
Uh, Silly Squid's chance to push. They take Joe down, but they really need to try to take down one of their Zuka players. Yeah, and Riku has these strikes at the ready. They're going to try and pop them on this uh, upper left side, but Pelus doesn't care about them. They're going to drop, and same with Joe and Ball. Uh, not going to quite get enough picks to fully stall the zone, but that is going to be enough from Joe in half, except Splato is still on the tower. It's, they're going to get shut down, though. Uh, and map one goes over to Shush. No, and what a crazy game. Like we said, these are the three and the two seeds. What a close game we had, at least towards the beginning. What a back and forth we had. Once... Um, just got past that second checkpoint, though. We said it. Once you get past that second checkpoint, it's just points galore. Yeah, it's... I mean, we see it right here. Uh, you know, the t checkpoint almost went down there, and if they let that happen... I mean, there's not... There's no telling what Shush can get off of that so early in the game. Now... Two Silly Squids and Octo's credit. They stayed in the game for quite a while. They almost got that second checkpoint of their own. Uh, but... Uh, Shush got super aggressive at the end there with that cooler break and with all the specials and everything that they had really with uh, the ability to fight uh, with their comp. It just, you know, staggered Silly Squids and Odd Octos and kind of put everybody on the team in an unfavorable scenario, especially right here. You know, everyone is having to respawn here, having to jump back in. You know, Splat Zero jumps in, but is going to have to play a 1v2 because everyone else got staggered as well. No, for sure. And I think that was the main thing that happened a lot for Silly Squids is they would get a good push, but then the stagger started happening for them. Either one goes down early, another one goes down after that, and it's just that constant cycle of a stagger. And that's really tough on tower control. Uh, but <laughs> while we move on to Rainmaker Scorch, staggering is Hold always... On. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Elu dropped 29 kills. Oh my freaking nine. Balloon just confirmed it in Twitch chat. Oh, <laughs> what? My god. Bro dropped a nuke. Oh my god. There's no way. Oh. Hey, I, I need to see a screenshot of this on Twitter or something. Hold on. Oh. Please tell me. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take a look after this. That's just absolutely nuts. That is insane. <laughs> wow! Oh, <Lord. laughs> okay, well, Anyways. strong work to Pelu. We're gonna load up into Rainmaker Scorch Gorge. Um, <laughs> yeah, shout out to Pelu. Hey, almost dropped that... the thirty bomb. Hey, do that again, but for thirty this time. <laughs> I want to see this go to the distance. Let somebody on Silly Squid's Odd Octo has got to get one. Ooh, I'm gonna pick. Actually... I'm gonna pick Riku. Drop thirty here on Bucket right now. I believe in you. Go get him. Ooh, ooh, but we do see oh, my going. Bio. Actually, did the heavy edit splatling. I love this pick on Rainmaker. Yeah, it's got such high DBS and can shred really well. It shuts down aggression incredibly because of, you know, the nature of a splatling. Unless you're beam and then you just get two. Uh, and enable Silly Squids and Odd Octos to get the first checkpoint within 30 seconds. Oh my god. Well, if, if you want to come back, you know, immediately and come out the gate swinging on map two. I mean, this is exactly how you do it. It's a Zuka pick from Beam. Beam is on fire right now. Uh, as Riku is going to take the position, going to go down here as well. Now they're going to have to deal with the Zuka and half, and it's not going to quite work out for further than 67 points uh, remaining. But still, what a statement to make on your first 30 seconds. No, for sure. But we see Joe here ready with that uh, zip caster on the stamper. Decides to pop it here. One goes down, two goes down on the side of Silly Squid, and this might just be a checkpoint break for Shush. Oh, it, not quite. We see Riku getting super aggressive there, just preventing the Rainmaker from moving forward, but Joe and Paul are still alive, providing jumps to half and uh, Pelu here, I believe. Yeah, Pelu's back up now. Pelu's gonna pop the Zuka, find a pick onto uh, Splat Zero. Not going to find much else, but stall enough for Joe and have to be back up and ready to fight Beam and Riku here. Let's see. Yeah, we're... we see we see Beam here. Actually gets marked, has to back up a little. Riku pops the strikes, and this is their chance to start moving back in. 
Yeah, uh, they're going to get back into mid at least, but they're going to have to deal with the Zuka from uh, Ball, which just got popped and got a pick on the beam. And they're just going to be firing from over the hump of mid. Uh, just the artillery barrage with Joe moving forward into it. It's going to enable Shush to get that checkpoint break and be set up really well with half of the snipe area for a really quick lead swap. Yeah, that's going to be the lead swap. Joe with the Zipcaster tries to get, uh, I think that's a splat there. But, you know, half doing a really good job just stalling the Rainmaker here. Beam trying to push up, Azuga being popped, but nothing too much. Beam actually gets the pick, but gets traded out. Yeah, Ball playing really reserved here. Uh, kind of in the back, just staying alive. Has the Zuka at the ready. Going to pop it. Not quite going to get a pick, but going to at least paint over uh, somebody's feet. And now... It's two in favor of Silly Squids and Octos. Can they get much more? The Zuka is not going to cash in any uh, kills quite yet, but it's going to stall enough and provide enough damage for the rest of Shush to stay up on here. Joe is going to go down, though, and it's just half remaining marked. They're going to have to back off pretty far here as Pelu and uh, Ball have to fight for themselves. Yeah, and we see here just Pelu being such a rat, having to eventually finally back off now. Um, but, you know, they took so much space, and I feel like the rest of the side of Silly Squid, besides Beam, is kind of a great push up here. As I say that, Beam pops the Zuka, unable to get a pick, maybe gets that on half, doesn't get that lottery Zuka. Not quite. Ball getting two, though, and Joe getting one, uh, means that Shush is going to be able to take this Rainmaker. They have a Zuka at the ready from uh, Pelu here, not quite going to find anything. They're going to have to deal with these strikes now, just slow down a little bit. Uh, two members going down in favor of Shush, uh, but now we're down to a 2v2 with just Rainmaker and Pelu left. There's one on the flank. Can they? Uh, it looks like half is just going to go for as many points as possible. I'm not quite going to take the score down, but uh, Splat Zero is going to get traded out, and now Silly Squeeze and Octos are just going to forgo the Rainmaker and try and reset it, uh, to try and set up for a really big push here with a minute remaining in mid. And Joe gets a burst bomb combo there right now, I think. And, you know, I think what's so good about the machine right now, especially in advantage for Shush, is Balloon can just throw point sensors everywhere. And if Billy Squids decides to walk into it, that's a free location and probably free pick to the side of Shush. Yeah, especially with that double Zuka and the strikes. You, can, you have so much uh, utility to really force... Uh, Silly Squids and Odd Octos to move around and you can kind of just corner them into just exactly where you want them to be. As I say that though, two members end up going down. It's just Ball and the Rainmaker on, I believe, halves remaining. They're going to have to provide some jumps and now Silly Squids are going to uh, get a little bit of a foothold back. Uh, but Pelu and Joe are just being a thorn in the side of Silly Squids and Odd Octos, finding so many picks. This tag team working so well in favor of Shush. And it looks like they're going to go up 2-0 here uh, with Ball getting another pick, just going bananas in the spawn of Silly Squids and Odd Octos. That game was so tough for the side of... Um, what am I trying to... For the side of Silly Squids, they, they had such an explosion at the beginning of the game, but were never able to get back on their feet for the rest of it. Yeah. Kind of tough to see. Because uh, now you're down 2-0, and now you need to win the next three maps in a row. You know, not all on your picks, I would assume. Uh, and so it's gonna be it's gonna be quite the uphill battle. Unfortunately, Riku didn't drop 30. No. <laughs> Imagine if that happened. That would have been nuts. <laughs> that would have been so funny. <laughs> that would have been hype. Uh, okay. But Gush played that really well, uh, especially. Ball kind of went crazy on this. Uh, got a lot of picks going, got a lot of space, uh, played really well uh, and reserved when needed to be. And this double kind of just kind of ended the game, if I'm being realistic. I don't think Silly Squids and Odd Octos really got out of their spawn after a minute 30 hit the clock. Yeah, I think we need to nerf this machine weapon again, guys. I don't no, know no, about please, that. Please, please, <laughs> No, I need to be carried by something. <laughs> I'm saying that as someone who used to play machine, bro. I'm so sad. <laughs> used to. I used to before the nerf, and now it just sucks to play the weapon sometimes. But I digress. We are moving on to another tower control game, actually, because we did ban a clams and zones map. We're rotating back 
to that first mode, we played Tower Control on Mako Moon. Yeah, we're going back to CC here. Uh, a little bit less of an open map, but some more flank routes with Mako Mart. I, I kind of want to see the heavy edit again. I don't think we're going to see a pencil here, to be honest. Uh, we'll probably see the pencil. Oh, from that. I don't want to see a pencil. I don't know. <laughs> no. Please, no pencil. I hope not. <laughs> but we'll probably see. It's such a strong weapon. You. You may as well run it when you have the opportunity to. So let's see if they are going to, uh, as it is match point in favor of Shush. Yeah, yes. we see it. But it's double uh, bucket. Ooh, the double we bucket double coming bucket. out. Hey, and, and we a see a white right right all the way yeah, okay, away. Okay. Wait, we went Hold from on. a double bucket comp from Silly Quids to a double bucket comp on Shush. I'm here for it. I am 100% with it. Right now, especially since we see the wiper on Silly Squids and on Octos. Unfortunately, Beam goes down uh, pretty early. Not going to have the Zooka on the side of Silly Squids and on Octos ready. Uh, and neither will you have those Tri Strikes, as Shush is just all over the place in mid right now, uh, pushing this tower already, uh, getting an early lead, early special advantage. All is going to go down here. And we yeah. reset to neutral. Yeah, we see. <laughs> Ooh, beam going down a little early there. The hammer coming out for Riku. Throws that hammer, almost gets the pick on that Zuka. But, you know, a bit of a scrap on the stacks right now. And that's three down on the side of Shush. This is so easy. Silly Squid's chance to start pushing up. Yeah, and they already take the lead here. Let's see if they can clear through this first checkpoint. Beam is going to pop the try Zuka. And same thing with Kite and these strikes. The hammer's gonna come out. Already one pick from Riku. Uh, getting stamped down like you're playing Donkey Kong, bro. <laughs> I like that analogy, but we see actually Silly Squiz being able to get to that second checkpoint, but two go down, a third goes down, and that's gonna be a delayed wipe. We see Beam actually jumps in and gets a trade right there. Nah, my man Beam's going ham and giving just enough space for Riku to try and uh, make more things happen. With Kite here getting the pick on the Pelu, it's just half left. They're going to have to back off here uh, so they don't get rushed from behind by two members of Silly Squids and Odd Octos. Uh, and these strikes coming out are going to force uh, half out even more. Riku with another hammer. Let's see if it'll get anything. Not quite, but Riku is just going to shark this ledge here, be as annoying as possible, hit people with these 60 damage ticks. Cash from the Zuka Beam! Oh my god, the collateral double uh, is going to save the offense from Silly Squids and Odd Octos, but everyone else is going to go down around them, and so does Beam. It's just Kite remaining as the jump gets camped, and it's... Oh no, two oh, jumps no. being caught by Pelu. Oh, now it's time for Shush uh, to go on the offensive here. Uh-oh. Oh, my Wi-Fi might okay. be dying. Um, <laughs> All right, let's transition over. But we see right. Shush. <laughs> we see Shush starting to push up here. Gets the strikes out from. The, I think that's the side of. I think Balloons playing Slosher. But you know, a good defense from Silly Silly Squids, preventing Shush from getting to that second checkpoint. Yeah, it's very solid defense. And a lot of very, very well executed upon trades uh, from both teams, but especially Silly Squids and so uh, Odd Octos, as Riku and Kite are here just trying to get a little bit more aggressive, trying to play these ledges, take some space, uh, and be make space for Beam with the Zuka. Not going to quite find anything just yet, but is going to force Shush back onto this platform. You know, they're a little afraid to challenge the Zuka, and I don't quite blame them. So Riku gets a little bit aggressive trying to pop this uh, you know, torpedo on the Pelu, and strikes come out on the tower. Uh, it's Beam left up on the, on the left, and Pelu gets a pick on the Kite with the Zuka. Going to get two more. Excuse me! Wow! Okay! We're getting collaterals left, right, and center! It's just his turn for the offensive again. A minute 30 remaining. But everyone's going down. Beam is on the flank behind. It's just half left. Half has to jump out. Silly Squids and Oct Octos are back to where they were the, you know, to start this match. Just constantly on the offensive, getting super aggressive. Really well played so far from them with the offense. They are turning around. No, and we can see how, just how aggressive they're playing right here. Two down for the side of Sully Squids, though. And this is Shush's opportunity to start pushing back in. Yeah, it looks like 
Ooh, Shush is going to get some solid defensive picks. They're going to be uh, on the advantage, taking this right stacks. The little do they know, there's two members of Silly Squiz and Odd Octos ready to contest, but they do know Riku goes Riku goes down, and uh, Pelu is going to go on the aggressive here. Uh, Beam, though, on the flank, not going to uh, be noticed again, getting one pick, stopping the tower. However, Pelu Zuka is at the ready. Same thing with Joe's. And <laughs> not quite going to find anything, but shipping a lot on the kite here, forcing them to play so far back with these strikes. Nobody's going to be allowed to touch the tower with five of them being popped on top of it. Uh, <laughs> but Shush is still largely in control of the map right now. No, we call, call it triple strikes? No, let's call it, uh, what is it? Quintuple. Quintuple. Quintuple strike. <laughs> oh, look at that, Zuka gets two. Oh my god, the Zuka collaterals. Jesus, so many Zuka collaterals in this game, and Shush has taken the lead already. They're onto this third checkpoint. It's looking like it's just going to be a sweep for Shush here, and it is 3-0 for Shush over Silly Squids and Odd Octos. And you can see a bit of the the, the squid bagging from Balloon at the end there. Just a tad. <laughs> just, just a tad, but you know, maybe they're just, just having a little bit of fun. I'm sure these... Uh, I'm pretty sure these guys are all close friends so um but yeah let's look at this replay a little bit the beam zuka gets two and oh man the, the, i think what's so important for silly squids early on was they were playing so aggressively unfortunately got punished occasionally like here but they were able to hold the lead for so long they didn't lose it until like the last minute if i remember correctly no, they, they held on to it for quite a while. And what really kind of screwed them over were just how many collaterals Pelu got on the Zuka. We saw one right there on the defense. That fully turned the game around. Uh, and then there was another later on in the game at about, I want to say, 20 seconds left. Maybe 30? Yeah, r right around yeah, here. Right here. <laughs> yeah, we where Pelu gets a Zuka, pops it, finds one, finds a second. And Joe also pops a Zuka there to get uh, two more picks, and that's a full wipe in favor of Shush. Oh, definitely. And it's... It, I, I think we're looking at this replay again. But, you know, I think also on the side of Shush, they, even though they're down most of the game, they were able to build that momentum. And that kind of comes with just how power is as a game mode, if we're being honest here. <laughs> yeah, especially with how much uh, special charge you get from the tower. You know, if you're riding the tower and you're behind, you get like five points a second. That's kind of nuts. No, for sure. But, Sig, I believe that is... Well, let's look at the bracket real quick. We All have right. Essence actually upsetting the number one seeds, Duck Motif, to make it to the winner's side finals. They will be playing Shush in the next set, which we will get to soon. But um, I think if we take a quick peek at the loser side, uh, I'm not sure how much we have progressed there. But well, let's see here. We have Flop Nation versus Beak Blast. Let's do. Let's go, Flop Nation. Beak Blast is Blast. on a run right now. And then we have Picky Pew versus uh, LGBTQ. We we figured it out, guys. Yeah. I. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so those there, whoever wins that is gonna have to play Duck Motif. That's gonna be a tough set, just in general. Mm -hmm. Duck Motif is probably, you know, not not in the greatest moods after losing, uh, you know, three two to Essence, and they're probably gonna want the run back. I th this is gonna be pretty tough uh, for either Prickly Pear or Legibete <laughs> Uh And it looks like Prickly Pear uh, has the advantage. They're up one zero. Oh, so they I, I just, can't wait to see. They actually just won the set two zero. But oh shoot. I digress. We will be transitioning to our next set of casters. This is it for me and you, Sig. But where can the lovely people find you, Sig, if they're interested? The people can find me uh, on any social media, just about Twitter, Twitch, Discord, YouTube, all of that jazz. Uh, at Sig Dokari, just as you see on the screen at the bottom there. Rice, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can also see at the bottom of the screen... This is scream, <laughs> scream. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but I go by We Like Rice pretty much everywhere, Twitter, Twitch, wherever you can find social media. But yeah, that will be it for us.
today, Sig. But don't go anywhere. We will be back with more Squid Junction 66 action. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Squid Junction 66. I'm back. Uh, hi, it's me, Sig. And joining me now is Lily. How you doing, Lily? I'm doing pretty well, Sig. And it's great to be here with you for, I believe this is winner's finals between Essence and Shush. What a yeah. great name, Shush. That, that, that's kind of probably going to inspire me to stop yapping a little bit too much sometimes <laughs> on stream but uh we, we are we we did well, i believe we did see uh shush play in the previous set uh through the winners winners bracket didn't we yeah they just against... played in winter semis uh against mm -hmm. Wiz and odd octos and then the match before uh essence played and they two uh they played they won their set 2-0 against make a wish mm -hmm. uh and they're coming off a huge upset against duck motif uh, they just won that 3-2. So, I mean, this is... I mean, obviously, it's Winter's Finals. This is, like, you know, peak Splatoon right now. But, oh, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> it's looking fire right now. I can't I can't wait. I can't wait as well. And you mentioned upset. Uh, getting upset against Seed 1 always makes things super interesting, I believe. Because, like, it's going to come down to, well, now. Now the Essence Seed 5 has managed to make it this far. Uh, winning 3-2 against... Dark Motif must have been, I'm presuming, a very close set. Uh, it's going to it's gonna be down to the wire for them. They're going to be playing their hearts out in this set against Shush, I believe. And this set, we'll be seeing them first on uh, on Mahi Zone. Which, you know, that's pretty fun. I like Mahi Zones. Mahi Zone's good. We've got Ship Shape uh, Tower Control, and we also have uh, Rainmaker on Museum Dolphin Sino. Those are going to be, because this is a best of five, those are going to be the guaranteed ones we'll be seeing. And if we manage to bring it to game four and five, there'll be, of course, another Zones and another Tower Control. This is uh, this is the Strike Band system, so there are a couple of maps here which the teams have decided, yeah, we don't really want to play those. But what I find kind of interesting is, um, is I feel that if you're going to pick Ship Shape, you kind of have to have the real confidence that you're gonna you're gonna like get that snowballing in your favor i think but wh what do you think of these choices uh i'm seeing a lot of snowballing early uh with both mahi mm -hmm. mahi and ship shape like you mentioned earlier uh but i'm also seeing it slow down a little bit in maps three and four you know museum delfoncino and hagglefish market on splat zones are kind of larger maps where you slow down the pace a little bit just because of you know how large and open the maps can be at times uh, and then we kind of ended off with just a, a bit of a slug fest on TC Mako Mart. <laughs> there, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm quite excited, uh, especially for this first one. I, to be honest, I don't see Mahi Mahi Resort that often. 
attorney. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good fun. It's nice to see, and it's nice to see it still persists, especially since the uh, changes. But I reckon zones here in Mahi Mahi Resort is quite a good one. Uh, it's a little bit, it's it's a little bit of a of a cheesed zone map. I, I feel like I've seen I've seen uh, reef sliders come out here a fair bit to kind of like just like stall out that zone quite a lot, which you know could be a potential tactic if you want to avoid that snowball you play, but. Once again, because it is pretty cramped early on in the game, and if you manage to make the most of that and get like uh, your backline up overlooking the other team's court, then you can definitely lock them out pretty quickly early on. It can be a little bit difficult uh, navigating to the side islands. We do see, actually, speaking of backlines, pencil on either side, of course, going to be the classic cooler backline weapon, which is pretty much standard at this point in the game. But another interesting thing we are seeing is Nilla on the tent. As well, that's going to be providing some nice a double zooka actually with the neo machine as well on on the side of essence. I reckon that's going to be a couple of very interesting choices for them regarding zooka weapons because they're not really playing a, a shooter comp here. No, they're not. You know, when you play when you play the no shooter comp, you're forgoing a little bit uh, more mobility for kind of the specialties that other weapon classes will provide. Uh, in this specifically, you get a ton of AOE from the machine and you know just tenderbrel in general. Uh, where you can get a lot uh, of space created just off of your shield pushing. As we say that, there's so many Zooka trades going back and forth here. Just such a strong special right now. Nilla also getting one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And Shush is going to uh, gain control of the zone through all of that, ticking down, chewing through that penalty. Uh, and now they're going down past 60 points. Or past 70. Yeah, past 60. Oh yeah, past 70 points for them, which is certainly looking good, but they have lost a couple of players here. This could be where Essence is going to be taking this and looking to get a lead on them, look to push it a little bit further forward, which they definitely do, knowing those three players have gone down here. Uh, we're seeing Ivy Wumi, who is probably going to try and find an opportunity at some point just to uh, play it safe, build up a crab tank, and hopefully move up here to do that. But we are also seeing from Shush this zip caster, probably throwing a spanner into the works here, which is definitely going to put that push to an end if they can't get it back anytime soon. But they do manage to. Two players have gone down on the side of Shush here. Essence is going to be holding this. They haven't been able to get a lead just yet, but this penalty is taking down fast. Yeah, and Joe going down there isn't going to help things much for Shush, as, as well as Ibi Wumi getting a trade and possibly another pick here on the ball, and they do so. What a great play from Ibi Wumi on these duelies. We've seen them shredding on it all night. Uh, and we're going to go for more. Pelu is going to try and find something with the Zuka pick as Essence sticks down to pass 40, and the map completely changes now with the water level dropping. Let's see what happens. These strikes coming out, they're going to neutralize <gasps> oh, this for at least a time. Uh, and. Uh, it's not going to matter. Yeah, actually, it's going to maintain control of the zone. <laughs> yeah, three players on the side of Shush actually went down there. Essence, th that was fantastic for Essence. We're talking about like snowballing maps here, but it was actually uh, at this point of the game where things seem to be going very, very far in Ooh. Essence's favor. They really have full control here. If they don't manage to get any picks or, or an entry back into the zone soon, Essence is just going to take this to a knockout. It does look like uh, Shush did manage to find an opening in there. I didn't quite see what it was but uh, they are looking to at least apply 65 penalty points just to keep this match going for longer Sig. Yeah, and now they're using their Zookas to, you know, trade out, you know, one pick happening on, uh, one pick, you know, going coming in on both sides and the strikes coming in to hold off Essence uh, to allow Shush to uh, regain control of the zone after the flip. And I just want to talk about this Tenebrella is, is struggling a little bit just because of how much... Uh, you know, object damage is on Shush's comp. They have the Splatana, they have Azuka. It's, I mean, it's working, obviously, but it's getting shot down by so much right now. <laughs> and, you know, it's making it really hard for Essence to come back in. As I say that, though, one member ends up going down, and that's Joe going down on the Stamper. Make that two with Pelu uh, on the side of Shush, and that's going to allow Essence to fully flip the zone here with Azuka coming in from Nilla as well as, uh, as the support from Scotty here in the front line. Essence is going to retake control of the zone before Shush can get past 20. Yeah, going to the last 90 seconds as well, last minute and a half of the match. We can see how much uh, turf control already Essence has right here. That's going to make things a little bit difficult uh, for for Shush, rather, if they can't get these strikes out. They do manage to recap the zone, at least with the strikes, but with that crab tank just holding them back even further, they're really going to have to do something about that, which it does look like they do in order to be able to take up a little bit more space. 
distance is always keeping them at arm's length though. Uh, as we can see, IB Rumi just being able to uh, trade off at least, but with the help of uh, their backline, help of their pencils, still being able to get some key picks to at least maintain their presence for the moment. Yeah, I mean, this zone is going back and forth in this last minute here. Nilla pushing entirely through the zone, doing so much uh, in creating space on this tent, going behind, uh, going in front of it as well to stay safe from Pelu's bombs. And Scotty's going to find the pick. Uh, as, or never mind, Nilla is with that ch uh, chip damage from the long range with the Tenabrella. Uh, and that's going to lead to Essence maintaining control of the zone. They're down to only 30 penalty points remaining. Uh, While well, the strikes come out from Shush to try and uh, sell out the zone with the Zuka. The Zuka is not quite going to find anything. In <laughs> Quite on the contra uh, contrast, oh, yeah. uh, three picks, three members of Shush are going to go down here. And it looks like Essence might even be able to get a, secure a KO here with only two penalty points remaining. The new zone is going to be neutralized, and there's going to be a full wipeout on the side of Shush, and that's going to be it. That is it indeed, and that wipeout certainly was almost was almost a little bit brutal to be able to take that. But Essence, I feel they they've just got the essence of this map, even though they weren't playing like the shooter comp. I feel like what they had and what they were thinking with uh, bringing the tent here um, was fantastic for them. I think just to be able to know that you know. We can kind of push up at a steady rate with this. We can make sure we have a lot of paint on the ground, even if we aren't playing... Uh, well, you know, shooters, they're probably the best painting weapons of the game, in my opinion, anyway. But what they were able to have with a pencil uh, to kind of support the rest of their, their kind of shorter range weapons, especially the Julies, especially the machine as well. Bringing out machine here was a fantastic choice because you do have those uh, more high ground areas in order to be able to push off uh, the other team from as well to help set something up a little bit further ahead but i think what i liked seeing from essence here was how free the map was for them uh, especially once we got through that like change of change of water level as we can see in these replays here um the counter pick to a to anything that you need object damage for is always going to be stamper and stamper is in a fantastic but at the moment, I feel in the matter regarding uh, regarding just being able to do that object damage to things like uh, things like tent, things like bubble. We didn't see bubble there, but you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those picks which is just gonna be I think really strong. You've got a lot of range with Stamper as well. You mustn't forget uh, Essence with the double Zuka comp. I think is gonna be great for them to stick to a double Zuka here on uh, ship shape. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's just a question of do you want to run tent here. Tent can struggle a little bit on this map, uh, but it is very, very good uh, in a few places in particular, especially taking that bridge area in the top left, uh, right by the first checkpoint of tower. I'm very curious to see if we'll see it just because of that. It's able to set up those ink mines too uh, on each platform of the tower, mm -hmm. you know, between the grates. I I'm very, I'm very curious. Uh, it doesn't look like we're seeing a tent, but we are seeing a double bucket comp, uh, which I think is going to be fantastic at just being able to clear out those high ground areas. Of course, uh, double bucket, of course, Scotty and Nilla being uh, playing the Machine Neo and the v, v Slosher in particular, which of course is going to be great. You know, strikes on tower. That's 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 your, your GG play right there. It does look like already the stamps have been taken out on the side of Shush here, but that Slosher on the other side being taken out. We're seeing a pretty scrappy fight in mid. Looking to see who can actually duke it out to maintain control and get that tower rolling forward first. But with this crab tank actually uh, allowing a couple of points to go down to the team, does look like that's going to be uh, that's going to be drawing some eyes, drawing some attention over from Shush here to try and push Essence back. But the thing is, Shush has actually lost a couple of players here, so Essence is really going to be, I believe, the team that might be able to uh, make this next push and really get something happen. Yeah, I be Wumi in sneaky, pulling off an obscene one v two. That that was just mm -hmm. absolutely disgusting <laughs> uh, on the defense there. It's completely shut down Shush's uh, push here, and now there are three members of Essence in the spawn of Shush, uh, and but Joe is behind them. Uh, they get picked off by Nilla, and that's going to enable uh, Sune to just ride this tower out and you know get past the checkpoint one. Probably maybe get to the second one with how well. Uh, Essence is holding uh, Shush on their platform. As we see, uh, I believe that was... Scotty just went down uh, yeah. just now. I think that, that might be their first or se maybe second death of the game. And, <laughs> you know, 
what's it called essence is already down to 20 points it is three and a half minutes in yeah well that's what we're talking about regarding snowballing once you can get through that first checkpoint and have control of their court which we saw especially with the help of umi's tank up on their plat which was extremely extremely powerful oppressive spot for them especially if you're respawning uh, like they were there you can just keep that tower rolling but it's around that 21 point uh that, that final checkpoint where things can really start getting a little bit precarious uh, if the other team is starting, if the defending team is starting to collapse around the tower and stop you in your tracks right there. But that's not going to be stopping, I believe, uh, Shush from making a return push here because even though they have a couple of players down, they're getting this incredible trade on the tower here, looking for another one. I believe that machine, Scott, is going to be pushing off half here, getting another jump in, looking to get... Pick, but let's just see if Bola is going to be surviving that, which they do. Thank goodness for that, I believe. <laughs> it does look like they're going to have to get this game into a bit of a neutral position, win a fight before they can get the momentum going again, however. Yeah, it's looking like it is kind of mid is in favor of Shush right now. They're going to pop the cooler, then they're going to push the tower uh, into it. Uh, the Zuka's coming out, getting one pick, very close. Uh, it's just Scotty left mm -hmm. up front here, gonna get the trade onto Pelu. However, Pelu is coolered up. Was uh, Scotty? Doesn't quite look like it. It's gonna mean Joe can keep this going. And same thing with Pelu. Pelu's already back up fighting Nilla in this right side. Ball is there too. Uh, however, so many players are going down on the side of Shush. Essence is winning their fight super duper well. And that's gonna enable them to shut down the offense here. Now Ibi Wumi's crab tank is gonna lock things down in the court. While uh, Balloon is going to try and get something going with the Zuka. Not quite gonna find a pick with the first two shots. And gonna let the third one run out. Uh, let's just see if uh, Shush can get something going and if Essence can really hold on here uh, with this onslaught of Zukas and Zips. Yeah, I think actually Shush probably won't be thinking about making a push anytime soon as they have lost all their players there almost. Um, that is going to be allowing Essence at least nicely cool it up to continue their push forward. I have to say, Ibumi's Crab Tanks has definitely been holding Shush back. They're, they're some of the some really aggressive Crab Tanks that we see that we have been seeing. Seeing another one already, but getting pretty pretty kind of a ball here trying to get a pick of them. Does look like Ibumi is going down. That's three plays down and a wipeout on the side of Essence. Shush is getting ready to make a return push here in this final minute of the game. I want to see how far they can get because they haven't got that much further from the first checkpoint exactly maybe they can find something here in order to like allow that snowball happen in their favor yeah first things first pelu's got to deal with iron wumi or ib wumi on this uh back of the map and they do so they also get another pick into scotty who is playing in pit here that's gonna lead to a two up situation for shush uh, make that a one-up, and they're going to pop, uh, and Essence is going to have to pop the strikes here just to stall out the tower. Uh, they have a lot of control in court, surprisingly, uh, with, even though half is looking over it, uh, they're able to sneak their way in. Now Ibi Wumi's just in the back line, diving two of them, not quite going to find anything, but going to put so much pressure, that's going to fully stop Shush's push for now, uh, and now put Shush only has seven seconds plus overtime to try and make things happen. It's going to, uh, look really good for them as, uh, Balloon and Joe are playing really well on this top right area, just getting super aggressive. It's just Ibi Wumi in court now, uh, fighting three on their own. Now Sune is going to try and challenge. Gets two, and that's the tower taken back in control. Shh, Essence takes game two as well. Oh, yeah, and it was that, that one little corner there. If you can play that uh, position really well as a backline, or if you're you're the defending team around that final checkpoint. Oh, the well, second last checkpoint? I'd say second last checkpoint, really. Or well, is it the final checkpoint? I can't remember. Would you say it's the second last checkpoint if it's the last checkpoint you have to get to to win? Anyway, I'm kind of rambling here. But <laughs> at that particular checkpoint, if you have your defense... Uh, really in order. You can just kind of collapse around the tower. And that is where I see so many of these overtimes go through die when people kind of start jumping over the tower in a desperation to get that one point lead, knowing that the other team has only been able to make it so far. Um, but I have to say, you know, I think what Essence have been able to do here throughout the game definitely uh, showed their dominance, especially I've got to say, uh, Tuna being able to allow their teams to kind of come back in to repaint their court as well keeping things uh nice for uh for front lines like ib Wumi to get some really aggressive crab tanks as well i think they've just kind of like uh played together extraordinarily well in order to maintain their presence and order to and also to be able to like very successfully retake the map as well 
Yeah, I think IB Woomy, I think the IB stands for in-control beam with how many flags he's pulling off. I mean, we saw beam pull off <laughs> like four or five of them in the last in the mm -hmm. Tower Control Makeup Art last set. And now Woomy's doing the same thing uh, to Shush here. <laughs> it's I mean, and it's working out really well. I mean, those flanks are pulling off so uh, so many people off of the push. It's forcing so many people to look the other way and enable the rest of the team to kind of get back in, to get picks with specials, to get picks with bombs, to just paint up and, you know, make it life so much harder for Shush this entire time. Absolutely. And, you know, we are on match point now, I believe is the best of five. Uh, if Essence can actually take this game, then not only will they a, have beaten seed one, but also seed two of this tournament, uh, Shush probably has to have uh, a few answers to what Essence is running here at the moment. I'm curious uh, what you think those answers could potentially be, because we're starting to get into the point of this particular, uh, these particular map modes where things might, the strategies might change around a little bit. They might not necessarily snowball as hard, and we may see some uh, some more slower, more uh, some, some more slower gameplay, some pushes which might be a little bit and forth a little bit more, I'd say. I'm thinking we might see a pencil here from the side of Shush. Uh, it doesn't really mm -hmm. help with the Rainmaker pop, but it provides so much pressure in the middle of the map uh, and kind of just uh, acts as an Eye of Sauron. Uh, almost just watching over the entirety of mid here as we do see pencils on both sides uh, Something we didn't quite see on the TC uh, And we, you know now we have I believe Pelu uh, I believe it's Wait, who's playing sniper rider? I thought it was well. It's half I can brain Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Papel is on the shot here, but Pelu does go down the first pick of the game so far two picks uh, two players down inside of Shush essence is looking for a third as well. Now, the Rainmaker hasn't really popped yet. That hasn't really been the priority of either of these teams, although Essence does get the pop. We can see that they made sure that they had their route at least painted and have that ramp in control before uh, before they start getting a push going. IB Wumi here just allowing that pressure, but Joe with the crab tank all the way up on top of that spinner is going to be a fantastic spot just to hold back any potential push that might be coming their way. Turning here, just waiting it out patiently until they can make that jump to get that checkpoint. But with the pencil coming out, they might have to reconsider their options here. Yeah, with no pencil on the side of Essence, it is going to be a little bit tough to try and poke out onto uh, Shush's pencil uh, on half here. Mm -hmm. As Pelu gets, or as Bala gets a Zuka pop, not quite going to find anything off of it. Uh, just a little bit of chip damage, but is going to go down uh, in return. And f uh, the Rainmaker also forcing a jump here. Essence is going to finally find some headway and uh, clear some ways into this uh, Rainmaker checkpoint. They're going to get the first check. Uh, Sune stays alive. That's the important part. That's your backline and the pencil. Uh, but <laughs> Nilla does not. Uh, going down to Pelu Zuka here. And three members down uh, on the side of Essence means this push is all well and dead. Uh, with Joe's Crab really just cleaning things up. Uh, now it's Shush's turn to try and make something happen on this offensive. They're going to have to deal with Nilla first, jumping out, and now Sune on this uh, Snipe Rider just being a thorn in their side, trying to get up here. Absolutely. Uh, and not to mention, Ivy Wooming and the Crap Tank once again coming around this side just to kind of shut anything down as well. They've lost one player. The machine's on both sides, actually, so things are looking pretty even. But Nilla here is just bullying that Rainmaker Carrier behind the mid spinner here, allowing Pelu to come in and pop that and maintain their control in mid. But it does look like uh, having two players on down on the side of Shush, Essence might still be able to come back from this without too much of a problem. I gotta say, um, Essence's Rainmaker play earlier was probably one of the most patient I've ever seen. They were they had their team kind of dropping like flies earlier on in the game before they were even able to make that push. But once they did, they were able to get that checkpoint. Shush is still looking to get more than one point on the board for them. And getting those two players collapsed around Pelu, things aren't looking too good for them as Shuna picks up the Rainmaker once again. We've seen how patient they are with this weapon. Let's see how many points they can run further up ahead with the help of this uh, Zuka. Yeah, and now it's Joe down, one of the main uh, factors in just slowing down Essence's offense. 
you know, they managed to get a push all the way down to 40 from around 60 where they were. They're going to go to all the way down to 26. There's Nilla rushing that Rainmaker behind the shield. Going to go down to three members, though. It's just Sune left, and they're going to have to deal with Joe being super aggressive. But Ibiwumi here jumping back in, saving their backline. Really well played from them. And now they're looking for more. They're hungry, but they're not going to find anything quite yet. Uh, they have the crab at the ready very soon, but they're going to have to uh, get through Peluzuka. And they're going to do just fine on that. Ibi Wumi also getting a pick onto the Rainmaker, just shutting down that push uh, as soon as they drop. Now Scotty here in this top right. Going to find the direct and the huge trade, enabling space for Ibi Wumi to pop this crab. And now Sune's up front too. Nilla looks like they might pop uh, their Zuka here and now pop the Rainmaker. Uh, well, the rest of Essence just holds the plat for space. They're going to go down here. But, you know, since Nilla is back on the Rainmaker, they're just going to hold out. Yeah, we are seeing a, uh, the game kind of move back into a more new direction here as all these players are just trying to get control of mid in oh. order to either, if you're if you're on Essence's side, you do have a minute left in the game, so you could potentially get uh, think about getting the Rainmaker into a safer position for yourself. But if you're on Shusha's side, you got to get more points. you got to get that checkpoint. That's your first priority here. And with those two players going down already, I don't think Shush is going to be able to take that Rainmaker anytime soon. Uh, no, it's not looking quite like it. They're going to have to commit to a drop for this one. Uh, and with mm -hmm. Zuka, it's looking like they might be able to, but they may as well just reset at this point. There's only 30 seconds left, though. They're going to need to act fast. And with, and with Joe getting the uh, melee kill, uh, they're going to do just that. The question is, will this crab uh, make enough space to get the first checkpoint and start off Shush's offense here? Uh, they're going to need to find maybe a spot here on Anilla to start things off. Unfortunately, it's just going to be a trade from uh, Pelu and Scotty, as well as Joe going down to a 2v1 in the bottom right section. This is not looking great for Shush. Essence looks like they're going to be able to take this 3-0 with Scotty on this flank. It's a, not a question of it's, it's, it's a question of when, and the Zuka comes through just for the extra chip damage, and Essence have successfully 3-0'd the top two seeds of the tournament. Wow, what a feat! I gotta say, what a feat to be able to do in in a in a double elim in elimination tournament like Squid Junction. And I have to say, I think what it came down to that match more than anything was patience. Just knowing that they have to make sure the Rainmaker is exactly where Shush can't touch it. Uh, they can touch any of the other players really, but if that Rainmaker is in a safe spot and if the uh, and allows time for the rest of Essence to be able to come in and support those pushes, then I feel like Shush just weren't able to to really have that much of a that much of an answer to how Essence were were playing that Rainmaker. We saw that first checkpoint break came a minute into the game already, and I swear they were holding that Rainmaker for nearly a minute by the time they or maybe maybe more like forty seconds by the time they got to that. Yeah, I mean they picked it up and just did not let it go at the beginning there. And look at this drop from Wumi, getting one pick, getting the second one as well. Just huge plays, just shutting down all of Shush's uh, front line and aggression uh, by just being, uh, you know, by just finding the right angle to, you know, get huge value picks. And this Zuka coming in from Nilla with the Scott, uh, Scotty flank as well, just great end to overtime. Amazing coordination from Essence to get the three zero. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, what an incredible three or that once. I have to, I have to say, uh, Shush being able to actually um, nearly take game two like that. I, I thought, I thought they were almost able to do it. I think, I think Shush in that game in particular was particularly strong in that final push. We just needed to see pushes like that in that in that next game, and we could have potentially seen perhaps, perhaps a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a reverse sweep in action. I believe. I believe it could have happened. But anyway, that that does mean that Essence is going to be moving on to the grand final and Shush will be moving over into the loser's bracket to face off against Duck Motive Seed 1. Now, both of these teams have been taken out by Essence and are about to fight each other here in loser's bracket. We can see here um, Duck Motive have been uh, pushed down to loser's bracket right before and previously... Uh, it has been actually no duck motive and shush will be playing each possibly be playing each other but not necessarily this one my mistake my mistake we're waiting at the moment for silly squids and flop nation to to finish their uh set as duck motive is waiting patiently for their match that'll be happening 
Oh, it looks like we have a refresh. Uh, Flop Nation has two out Silly Squids and Odd Octos. Uh, they are out at fifth right now, and Flop Nation moves on to face off against Duck Motif. All right. We are going to uh, just go really quickly to a break as the teams get set up into lobbies and sort out their map picks and bans. We'll see you all in just a couple of minutes. Oh, shoot. I mean, uh, also, this is my last one. So, again, you can find me on any platform at SigDokari. Um, but don't, don't go anywhere. We still have three or four more matches that need to be played, that need conclusions. And bringing you that will be Lily and I believe NM uh, after I leave here. So have a wonderful day and stick around for the best Splatoon you'll see this week. Hello everyone and welcome back to Squid Junction 66. I'm Lily Gravybed and I'm here with NM Star123. Welcome in. We are going to Loser's Bracket now. How are you feeling, NM? I'm feeling really good about this. Of course, I did look at the streams a bit before. I know that Essence is going on an absolute toppling spree right now. Just pretty much getting top teams left and right. Pretty much just coming out from the from down low we're just seeing essence doing so much but we're seeing now in the losers bracket all these teams that caught of course toppled by essence trying to make their way back up to winners as we're looking at duck motif versus flop nation and duck motif is definitely not a strange name to anybody who's been in the competitive scene for a while we have seen this team time and time again even under duck duck mafia during the na you know, NA championships during September. Mm -hmm. We have seen this team time and time again, so we know what, what they're capable of. But in terms of Flop Nation, I'm pretty sure this is a pickup with, you know, the likes of that kid. And, and Kiki as well from uh, former team XOXO as well. So these are these are players that have that have won these open level tournaments as well, like Squid Junction, like Tuma Sink. Um, but like having these these two teams up against each other, these these players up against each other, I think is going to be. Uh, I, I I can't predict who's going to be coming out on top of this one. I would say I think I think a very memorable set. I believe it was Duck Motive that played. You know, I, I hope I'm not mis misremembering, but one of my favorite sets I've seen Duck Motive played. I've commentated here was in 20XX last year against Spark. Um, I think be, being able to beat them as well, which you know. Uh, strong uk team uh pretty well known as well so if you're if you're at the top you're really going to be taking uh games of uh get game thing games and tournament sets of teams like that but i'm curious to see now that um these players are going to be up against each other on tower control Hagglefish market exactly what they might be bringing to the table i believe that Henry, i think is Henry a shot player i can't even remember at this at this point in time but like having azuki here of course is going to be clearing out some of those key points of uh key points you want to be defending those key positions you want to be defending from uh on top of the tent on top of the the other tent i believe i believe people have like the same call out sometimes for both of them but you know um but you know once you start getting the tower pushed up into that area it can take a little a little bit of effort i think if you're on the attacking side um to really put us throw a spanner in the works of the defense so i'm curious to see how they manage 
to uh to, to work that one out um of course in terms of uh in terms of the other maps here we are going to be seeing rainmaker on museum once again which we just saw actually so we'll be seeing how these two teams play it and then if we go to a game three clan blitz and scorch Gorge, a personal favorite of mine but uh and i do hope we get to a game three i don't expect that we will knowing these players mm -hmm. yeah honestly uh considering the patch that we got this past week I could see a few new things coming out specifically for this map mode. We could see mm. a bubble weapon if anyone wants to use it. I know, you know, the bubble copium is on an all-time high high right now. And, of course, this is tower control, so we could see something like Vanilla Blaster if anyone wants to play that. Though, of course, the more popular options we have seen are, like, more like Junior and Zimmy. I've seen, you know, being thrown around in terms of, like building comps and just like detailing those out i could see that shot pencil buckets seems to be a good yep. trilogy though that is still very you strong got your staple patch, even with pencil and talking yeah mm. yeah no you got your staple midline you got your shot with zuka you got your cooler with pencil and you know just one other midline in that comp that i feel like that's very standard maybe like a tennis or a neo machine like even in like a squeezer and of course range blaster too I feel like those are like the standard comps that you could see right now. So we'll see if any of them run that. I know Red Shell, so they might pop out with an Octobrush or an Octobrush Nouveau. They love that thing. So I imagine mm -hmm. they would be one to play that. But either way, we're just going to have to wait and see as we're now getting into the first match of this round on Tower Haggle. Yeah, let's see what the, let's see what these uh, loadouts are from either side. We are seeing actually the Octobrush come out as well as on the other side of course there's the pencil that kid is going to be playing the shot and also you have those kind of midline uh weapons such as the bucket of course those strikes are going to be super useful here and also in terms of object damage in terms of just being able to zone out the other side stamp a fantastic choice as well it does look like already the stamp goes down and also the neo machine on the other side that is their zuka weapon that we still have to wait a little bit of time for but once again they've lost the other zuka weapon we've seen pretty in mid so far but the winner of that i think is flop nation they can just get their team out in front of the tower to be able to make that push does look like they're getting the first points in the game so far they have lost their back line though so it might be a little bit uh difficult for any of their players to come back in yeah already seeing two down on the side of dark motif as the members of flop nation are already pushing up you're already seeing harshi on that snipe rider just staying on the tower but here comes red shell coming from up top here with a zip caster trying to see if they can get some picks just trying to zip not able to find anything as the members of flop nation are going to continue running in but somehow red shell is going to stay alive for a little bit longer before getting picked off i really like the comps on both sides because i feel like it's the really strong meta right now compared to the really strong meta if we see those like you know those three notable bands we've been seeing you know you got your zacko fan you got your zap and we're already seeing so much going down on duck motif so many picks on their side as we see liam trying to go from this bottom angle here with the stamper really nice shots coming out from them trying to get the pick on the neo machine gonna be able to get it while red shell is gonna be going towards mid and he's gonna be able to get on a spree right now continuing to push further and further before getting picked off yeah it's that crucial uh area of the map where you really want to have your defense strong in order to stop that tower moving moving past that second checkpoint there that kid getting the zooka out hopefully we'll be able to clear an area in order to get that tower moving back in their favor but they are going to be contested they do manage to get a pick on uh Ptolemaeus, however as that zooka comes out on the other side Still, once again, every time every time anyone seems Suzuki here, it, it's almost like a guaranteed a guaranteed splat on them so far. But you know, Hachi riding the tower once again, making sure things are nice and painted for them to be able to move in. Those tracks coming out to clear out that uh, clear out that top left area as well. Things are looking pretty good for Flop Nation here, but Duck Motive coming up with the strikes as well is just going to be unfortunately confirming a wipeout on them they won't be able to play off that that kid here i saw them kind of move up into this position before just to be able to cause a little bit of a distraction skirmishing really well with a shot actually um but unfortunately for them red shell is going to be pretty much acting like a red shell in mario kart being able to take them out just like that zooming directly for them uh, that's exactly what i love to see in terms of being able to take out those skirmishes anyway yeah, no, being able to take up that, Red Shell is very known for just coming up and just able to make solo plays on their own with that Octobrush 
of course being well known for that weapon in both of the kits and we're seeing the cooler coming out for a duck motif which is going to be very useful for them as we're seeing red Shell just trying to stay alive against the stamper not going to work out but the zooka is coming out here from the neo machine meanwhile super todd is trying to move up the members of flop nation are starting to you know come back with each other and that's the strength of the, like the double mid line they can easily combo off each other and that's what they're trying to do here as they're both trying to push up even with their sniper rider gone they have three solid front lines able to take down the zap that was trying to give a jump for red shell here as they're able to take down two take down three and that's a wipeout on the side of duck motif the double midline is just very strong as we keep seeing time and time again in this meta and alongside shot with those zookas it's so much combo damage just so much 60 damage coming out from all of these weapons and now a cooler coming out from a pencil that's going to play very far back it's going to be really hard for duck motif to be able to get in there but with three picks on the other side they're going to be able to push up able to team up against them because of their cooler on their own and it's going to be starting to paint with one minute left on the clock they still have a lot to go they have to get halfway through the third checkpoint to even tie but hopefully these tri strikes coming out from the zeko fin alongside two specials on the ready three actually with the tactical now coming out for deck motif hopefully this is going to be able to turn the tide for them going to be able to take the zuka on the backside, but not before losing red shell here as my dama is trying to get the pick on Leon. going to be able to take the trade but super todd is just holding it down even with red shell coming in from the right side flank they're gonna be able to hold it down with all these suction bombs coming in but we're seeing the tri strike come in and it's not looking very good right now as it's just 20 seconds left on the clock and it's three down on both sides oh it's just those back lines now and that wipeout is actually gonna be coming out once again i think that's the third wipeout we've seen on doug motive here Flop Nation is just going to be taking that opportunity to regain control and actually move up ahead. Getting a pick already. That kid just coming in really fast just to fight. Unfortunately, that is going to be a going to be a punishment on them but they still managed to with that push all the way down to uh 12 they still just managed to uh assert their dominance all the way up until the very end yeah no they were able to assert their dominance all the way up to the very end you literally saw how many times the members of flop nations were able to get the wipeout on duck motif even with Red Shell here coming in with the zip and staying alive against three members of Flop Nation. It just wasn't enough as the other members were always able to just push up. You see that kid always being able to flank or hold on their own with just a shot. You're seeing Liam here using this this perch very, very effectively with the main weapon of Stamper able to just pretty much use their shots like a sh like like a shark fin able to come in for the pick seeing that kid able to take down red shell on their own they were just always up always had the cooler always had their specials always came back made sure that they were able to hold it down even when the members of duck motif were trying to push up yeah absolutely you know um there was something you said earlier about the two midlines that were being run the stamper and bucket which i think you know stamper being being able to like both those weapons i think can combo off themselves really well but just having both of them together just to be able to combo off each other i think is a fantastic uh fantastic option for them as well which i think was something that were able to kind of keep keep everyone on the arms length i believe or at least to, to keep keep their zone of control a little bit just that little bit further away from them just to make sure that they were safe enough to kind of move up ahead which i think is always fantastic because of course you know with the bucket you've got the um splash damage from a bomb plus the main damage adds up to 100 and also uh the burst plus main weapon combo on uh stamper uh can kind of vaporize you in an instant i feel oh yeah no that thing is a behemoth especially when going up against it it feels like you're just wiped out in an instant just from that mm. first combo and of course you got that slosher too able to you know it's not a burst combo but the splat bomb combo is still really solid with it and on top of that even though tri strikes is not the strongest it is a solid special right now able to get itself in especially with cooler which i feel like is really effective for it because it could just fight as much as it wants when it has the cooler not care about its special and then when it respawns it could just i have tri strike i can use it to get in again uh, speaking of getting in, we are getting into the second game here, Rainmaker Museum, which we saw not too long ago, but we're going to 
seeing actually you mentioned uh range blaster a little bit as a potential option we are seeing red shell in the range blast here which is definitely a switch up uh a gal as well which of course i think is gonna be a 52 gal which i think is gonna be fantastic just being able to hold up the area of around after that first checkpoint around that spinner which i think is Definitely gonna uh, gonna push them back a little bit if they can get up there and make those aggressive plays. This isn't a map where you really want to be uh, necessarily focusing too hard on that pop because you paint up mid too much from that first uh, Rainmaker pop. As we can see already, Flop Nation has painted up just a little bit more just to make sure they have a little bit of extra control in order to get that Rainmaker, which they have actually jumped over to that first checkpoint already. So we can see how that strategy is working out for them, even though they have lost a couple of players already this is gonna be duck motive trying to make a response to that yeah no duck motive is trying to make a response to that instantly that flop nation got snuck right above their heads as we see mm -hmm. bandit trying to hold it down with the snipe rider here but that kid is going to be trying to go for it but the bomb was able to pick him off just in time but it's just them and red shell alive right now they have to hold it down and make sure the members of flop nation aren't able to push up but with this tri strike they might try to do just that but we're seeing the 52 coming in here and i feel like something else that will work well for it, it later is that killer whale combo but we're seeing Harshi trying to push in with the Rainmaker, but they're going to get picked off before they can do anything with it. But two are going to be going down, one on either side. We're seeing Mind Timer with the shot this time rolling around for that Zuka shots. Going to be picked off by Liam here. But I feel like there's so much back and forth, but you see Flop Nation still has so much control. With these midlines, they still have so much paint alongside the shot and the pencil. All these weapons can paint more or less effectively compared to like duck motif because that range blaster i know it's not it's not going to paint the best it, it still paints solidly but it's not going to paint the best but as i'm saying that the members of flop nation are going to be going down liam is trying to fight a 1v2 but he's going to be picked off here but the cooler is going to be coming out for them as that kid is going to be picked off right as they get down there and we're oh, seeing man. the members of duck motif pushing up the slosher is going to be going down two coming in from the right side they weren't able to make the jump onto the pedestal but they're not going to be able to make it either as that kid was on the spinner trying to push in we're seeing the fight of 1v3 he gets one can they get two no they can't but the tri strike was able to hold it down able to get the rest of the members of duck motif and keep flop nation alive yeah okay flop nation are going to be making a return push here they have everything painted up around that spinner which i think is looking good for them with two players going down on the side of duck motif uh, only the Stamper is trying to be is will be coming back in on their side, and they have a three point lead so far, and they're definitely looking to extend it. I don't think it's going to be too much issue for them, as we can already see see uh, players on the side of Duck Motif kind of dropping there. With down to 37, they have extended the lead just as they planned. Not quite the knockout yet, but we are going to see a few uh, dangerous fights in order to be able to get anything happening for duck motive now uh i believe that the range blaster you have to definitely be thinking about where you're going to be playing those um those wave breakers because you know they are good at being able to provide at least a little bit of chip damage a little bit of location info but in order to get the most of that you really have to be able to win the fights around the wave breaker as well we have seen three players go down on duck motive just the rainmaker and it looks like the rest of flop nation kind of collapsing around upon them it is that duo of super Todd and liam the stamper and bucket being able to kind of lock that Rainmaker in that little corner there. So it's going to be a difficult place to get it out. They're probably just looking for that reset at this point. Yeah, they're just trying to look to reset here, especially with that kid using that Zuka to try to pick him off here. Going to be able to take the 52 gal and keep it in the corner here as they got tactic cooler buffs too. Going to be able to running in with only the shot on the side of Duck Motif left alive. And we're seeing Liam coming in with the zip caster, trying to see what they can get. The shot is on the right side, and that kid is not looking really good right now. Two of them going to be picked off 2v2 right now as Super Ty is going to be going down with the 52 as it's just Red Shell and Liam here in mid trying to hold each other off as much as possible and get jumps as Liam is going to be watching all of the jumps and pushing up with the rest of the menus of Flop Nation trying to push in here. We're seeing the charge flashes coming out from Liam. We're seeing so much happening here. And in the last 30 seconds, this is not what Duck Motif wants right now. We can see that the 52 is going to be trying to push in. They almost have their killer whale ready. They can be able to push up with a splash wall here. Maybe try to get something. But this triple inch strike is going to be holding him back. Maybe with just enough. But we're seeing the 52 coming in top mid. Trying to get Liam. Can they get the pick? Can they get the pick on the Rainmaker 2? Trying to push him back as much as they can. They're just trying to live 
Gonna be able to get a trade on that kid, but that's not gonna be enough. And hopefully this Trizuka is going to be able to get the pick. Is it gonna be enough time though? With three seconds left on the clock, they need to get this pop now. It's gonna be now or never here, as that kid is gonna be trying to fall for it, and that's gonna be game going to Flop Nation. Oh, what a game it was. Flop Nation being able to take the second game. This is a best of three, so they are going to be taking this set and be moving onward into the loser's bracket. But i got to say, that early push and being able to uh, pretty much have pretty, pretty fairly consistently, I'd say, like win their fights and be able to like gain advantages after that first checkpoint, taking, it all, taking the score all the way down to 37. Um, all they had to do after that was pretty much just like defend any potential response that Dark Motive had to them, which I think they did really well as well. We are seeing here in the replay that incredible play, that double that they managed to get before going down to Liam just to be able to stay alive. You don't see that kind of survivability from, uh, from, uh, from, I, I feel like you rarely see the kind of survivability here. Those kind of risky plays, but you know, sometimes you can pull it off. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're able to pull it off, and as we saw here, just these last few seconds, you saw how desperate the members of Duck Motif got. You saw the Zuka just absolutely just focusing on the Rainmaker, and as they were trying to get it, that kid was just able to either dive or just get the pick mm -hmm. and able to secure the you know the win for them as they're going to be moving on to the losers finals, which is going to be against you know as we saw before in winners finals, Stutch. Yeah. Okay. So. This is going to be, this is going to be fun. So Duck Motive, they were Seed 1 this tournament. Flop Nation beat Seed 1 as well now. So Flop Nation Seed 6 and Shush Seed 2. Shush has already been beaten by Essence, but, you know, all these teams have kind of been beaten by Essence at this point. So it's kind of like battle of the okay so so we've all lost the essence which one of us is the best that lost the essence at this point and that's kind of what we're seeing yeah, in, in these in these few in these few sets uh right before we get back to uh winners for the grand finals as well Trish versus flop nation now this is gonna be interesting do you reckon we might be seeing any change of strategies once we do get there i believe regarding shush because the set that we did see shush in essence uh, play on essence, but basically, I felt like that in some cases they were kind of able to to run shush over, and I wonder if like the difference between how Flop Nation have been playing and the difference between how shush have been playing before. I I, I can't exactly I can't exactly say who I reckon might be able to come out on top, but I'm curious to see how the how the the weapon combos. That they were able to pick, especially those those midlines, might be able to hold Shush back here. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I have been watching, and I do know Shush. I've been watching a few of their scrims over the past mm -hmm. couple of weeks. I do know what they can do. You know, once they get, once they push, once they get what they need, mm -hmm. I know that Balloon is probably going to be going on, you know, Neo Machine or Slosher, depending on how he feels. I know Joe is going to be going on that Stamper. I know they're going to have a shot. I know they're going to want Double Zuka and I maybe a little heavy edit, but mainly Pencil. And that's most likely going to be half or Pelu on that. I know that mm -hmm. they whip swap on the cooler option. That's what I'm thinking for comps. And as I've talked about before, those are tech. Like, those are what you see as the strongest comps in competitive right now. You see, you know, you, you see the Zuka, you see, you see the double Zuka, you see the double midline, you see the shot, you see the pencil. Balloon just DM'd me a gif of four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you do see those options and that's what they run consistently. You know, and even before in that grand, like not grand finals, what am I saying? But winners finals, you did see them run that too. I imagine that's what's going to happen here. And it's all mm -hmm. going to be an effort on, of course, we saw Flop Nation kind of run something similar. How are they going to play towards it? And who's going to be coming out on top of it more? I could see Shush going for more of like double Zuka, double bucket style. Meanwhile, or and of course with Stamper. Meanwhile, I could see Flop Nation, you know, sticking with what we saw them before. You know, Snipe Rider, Shot, Slosher, and Stamper. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, it does look like we have our map modes ready for the Losers Finals, I believe. Nearly ready? Something like that. We What we have uh, at the moment between Trish and Flop Nation is the um, five potential maps, but I do believe that this is, the, this is still Strike Ban. So Ooh. we will be seeing a couple of these being taken out. It does look like uh flops ban is going to be getting tc ink blot out of the game am i looking at this correctly yeah wait no yeah. it's up it does look like they they picked that they picked their map so rainmaker scorch gorge now this is something that we just we just saw flop nation win rainmaker so they're probably gonna be thinking a little bit about okay what things worked for them previously of course they had the um bucket and the bucket especially uh, which is going to be fantastic here just being able to uh clear out those uh snipe areas and those defensive areas around that first checkpoint um any any high ground of course is going to be dangerous to stand on if you know there's a bucket on the other side that can just get 70 damage instantly on you at a safe at a safe distance away um but also crab leg uh crab leg capital clam blitz Fantastic when you're going to be considering Crab Tank as well, so we might see some Crab Tank there. And we've also got Ship Shape Power Control as well, which we have seen before uh, not too long ago as well. But I feel that um, in terms of Rainmaker maps, Scorch Rainmaker can kind of play out a little bit similarly to, especially getting to that to that KO, to um, Museum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, the, like the, the reason I think that is like you, if you have like in place of the spinners on a uh, museum, you have the snipe, and if you get like a backline or if you get like a weapon that can just scope out the other team, like or, I, I, I love playing crab tank there, of course. I, I'm, I'm always the crab tank on my team who tries to get up on the other teams, uh, <laughs> the other team's snipe to be able to just hold out the area and allow them to kind of push further ahead. Uh, if you can take control beyond that first checkpoint, it can be still pretty precarious and dangerous to kind of push it beyond the like 39, 40 point mark where, um, where you're starting to move into some pretty dangerous low ground areas compared to uh, where the other team can pretty much instantly spawn in and just collapse on you. Uh, so the one thing that you probably want to be banking on for, uh, for running it to a knockout is to get a wipeout on the other team, um, or just to like significantly outplay them. I'm not really sure we'll probably be seeing that, uh, here, but in any case, the, the thing that I really like about on Scorch Gorge is how you can kind of like drop the Rainmaker back uh, very quickly into mid and get a very quick retake if you manage to paint up the middle of the map as quickly as possible. So um, getting that first checkpoint doesn't really doesn't really mean a huge amount because even if it can uh, start going in your favor very quickly, if both teams have that first checkpoint down, it's gonna be it's gonna really come down to okay, well who can get the Rainmaker to the other side the quickest? I believe. Um, and it really comes down to, I believe, being able to being able to play to uh, gain control of the other team's snipe area, uh, which te which will be happening after the first checkpoint is got. But the challenge to get that first checkpoint is it's, it's just a whole different whole different ball game, a whole different whole different rainmaker game in some sense. Yeah, I feel like. Most teams just try to push for that first checkpoint, and then after that, mm -hmm. you know, they try to get as much as they can after that. But yeah. either way, we're going to be starting to get into the match here, seeing the comps coming out. We are seeing the Nautilus come out from Pelu oh. this time on the side. I'm pretty sure it's the Nautilus. Yeah, yep, it's the one with triple splashdown on the side of Shush, and on the other side, it is as predicted the standard quote unquote meta comp we're seeing from Flop Nation. Mm -hmm. But that that's really interesting to see that that Nautilus, the 79, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, it's going to be a fantastic uh, midline slayer weapon. Already looking to get a pick or at least to push Pelly back to. Uh, sorry, not Pelly. Pelly's forcing that jump out as well. That Zook is already coming out this early in the game from that kid. Just to be able to assert 
that dominance and take up some space already. Pelu is going to be getting that triple splashdown all out already, just making it that extra little bit more difficult for Hashi to push ahead. But with the help of the rest of their team, they have nearly made the first checkpoint. But, you know, they just had to react to that Zuka <laughs> instead of being taken out there. But that is going to be that first checkpoint pretty cleanly for them. Not only that, but a pop squid roll trying to get to that. It's it's that area. It's that little area around the 40 points, which always it's always where those pushes kind of end. No, it's going to be around the 20 point where that push is going to end. Wow. As we're seeing Balloon <laughs> coming out with this loop that's trying to ward off the members of Flop Nation as the members of Shush are just trying to hold down their spawn, make sure they can't get in. As we're seeing Super Todd coming from the top right, trying to see if they can mm. get through. But with the cooler coming out from Shush, now is their time to push back in and to get something. We're seeing Joe pop their Trizuka as half is pushing up here. We're seeing two down on the side of Flop Nation. Just that Stamper and Snipe Rider left alive as Liam is going to be jumping back, opting to maybe instead give them that first check if the Snipe Rider can't get the pick yet. They're just going to give him the first check, but it's just going to be Balloon left alive there, opting to pop their Zooka to try to hold some ground, going to be able to pick off that kid, and Liam is going to be left alone there, going to be picked off too. This might be a comeback from the members of Shush as Pelu has their triple splash now, going to be opting to keep it for just a little bit, maybe going to be using it to try to make a push and try to give some protection towards that Rainmaker Carrier. Probably going to be half as Hira comes out. Going to be getting a double there as the Zuka is going to be trying to get some more picks. But the Rainmaker is going to reset, which is going to cause their push to get a little bit stagnant. Yeah, it is. Okay, so they do still have those players up ahead there. Um, being able to at least get a Zuka out to get a couple of picks as well, which is looking good for them. But those strikes in return is going to be forcing the Rainmaker into a corner here. Palu has already pushed up right near that final KO uh, they do manage to get to 18 here through all of that, which I think is fantastic. Pelu just being able to um, be extremely aggressive in their positioning, even if it does mean they kind of go down as a sacrifice to their team. It did help them at least get a score all the way down to 14. I have to say, Pelu's uh, triple splashdown, being able to get a double on them like that, that was fantastic. And I have to say, it could be also that the that the extra, extra couple of splashdowns uh, that can actually affect above ledges could have had an impact as well, which here, especially if you want to be controlling those snipe areas and pushing the defense, uh, the defense, the defending side out of those uh, spots could be could be pretty useful as well, which we have seen so far. We are seeing the game kind of move into a little bit of a neutral position, but a couple of plays have gone down on Flop Nation here. Shush is trying to regain control of, over the middle of the map, but they aren't seeing any results just yet. Yeah, no, not seeing any results as the members of Flop Nation are getting pretty spread out here. And the members of Shush going to be able to pick them off one by one. That kid trying to come back in, trying to get a pick on Balloon here, but not going to be able to try to follow through as Pelu is trying to hold down this bottom left side here as we're seeing Joe push up with the Zuka and the cooler going to be able to try to get a shot onto Liam not going to be able to get it but they still have that cooler so that is going to give them a fast respawn but with the triple ink strike coming in the members of Shush are running out and Flop Nation finally has control over mid going to be able to pick off Joe again leaving Pelu in so much purple ink but the triple splash down is going to be able to hold them back for just a little bit longer but we're seeing Pelu trying to push up they're going to be picked off the Trizuka coming from the left to get here trying to see what they can get not gonna be able to find anything but joe's gonna be going for a hail mary gonna be get picked off before they can try anything here the members of flop nation are pushing up very strongly but can the members of shush get the pick they need to get a special here if they want to stop this push they need to get something even just a little bit we'll stop them and joe is so close to his shizuka he's gonna be able to get it he's gonna be able to pop it can he get the pick he's got two more shots one more shot he's still he's still lagging them down which is very very useful at getting their other teams their specials giving them that time too as we're seeing another trizuka coming out from balloon trying to see if they can get some picks too going to be able to get an assist on liam they're going for it they're running for it can they get it no they can't but they might be able to if that kid holds it down but that is not looking likely here as the members of shush are going to keep that rainmaker in the bubble getting the first game and what a close first game that was. I think I think it was right to say that these are going to be extremely close matches that we're going to be seeing between these two teams. Um, and, you know, I, I think being able to run in and quickly dunk some points like that, even if not getting a knockout, that's kind of what you expect here in Scorch Rainmaker in any case. 
um, I have to say, what uh, what they were doing with the remake towards the end in terms of just being able to make sure they were kind of up on top of the sniper area was at least allowed them to kind of see what was going on, but also had a little bit of that advantage. I have to say, uh, that kid running up ahead and being able to find those little slim openings to get those to get that lead that early lead uh in the game fantastic we're seeing here Pelly uh Pelly's splash out i i want to see that in slow motion at some point i'm gonna i'm gonna have to ask like for a replay or something just to see exactly what was going on with this splash down mechanic here regarding the map terrain i'm very curious about that yeah, and you saw, like, when they were getting that push, too, they got it to 18, but that push mm -hmm. that Joe got, like, last second, just trying to run in to get a few more points, going from 18 to 14, in the end, saved them the game as Flop Nation was able to get it up to 17 in the end. If they didn't do that, they would have lost that first game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so things are looking up for Shush at the moment, going into uh, Clam Blitz on Crab Lake Capital. Uh, of course... Having having all those Zookas on your side, it's going to be fantastic if you are playing, uh, if, if the other team is playing the greats and you really want to be able to kind of push them out of those, out of those much more, much more dangerous positions to be in. Clan Blitz here. Now, um, the way I've seen things happen most of the time uh, has tended to, tended to involve Krakens a little bit. But now that Krakens have changed up, I'm curious to know if either of these teams are going to be considering like a 96 scale or something. I'm not sure they will. Not only because mm. of that cracking nerf, but also like a map like Crab Leg. Sure, it's a lot of flat terrain on the bottom, but you got to remember it's a lot of grading too. And that that's mm. not going to really be in the favor of a Kraken Royale because it is not going to be able to go yeah. on there. So I don't imagine we're going to be seeing some Krakens, but who knows? I could be wrong, but we're seeing Shush go with their same comp, and we're seeing a little switch up on the side of... We're seeing that Crab Tank that you were talking about before coming out from mm -hmm. this Montana Stamper Nouveau, and we're also seeing the Squeezer coming out. Again, two more solid midline Slayer options that we do see here and there, especially that Squeezer. But with that nerf to 220p, I'm, I'm surprised to see if how many Zookas it's going to be able to pump out. Yeah, the thing about Squeezer is that, uh, you know, I don't usually... Whenever I played Squeezer, it's not some, it's not a special I tend to play for, and which is why I often tend to see, like, double Zooka comps with Squeezer and Shot, or Squeezer and another weapon or something like that. They tend to be like, well, you know, you're there as a kind of backup Squeezer in some... Uh, backup Squeezer? Zooka in some sense. We are seeing these splashdowns once again be able to get some key picks, allowing uh, just to kind of move up ahead and take some space here. Um, but I, I do want to say a midline slayer like Squeezer is still going to be great in terms of being able to make those greats a dangerous spot to be on Super Todd, getting those Zookas out to try and retaliate here. Unfortunately, it does look like Shush is not able to push up too far ahead. Both teams are kind of playing somewhat patiently trying to like eye each other out i believe to try and try and figure out okay who's gonna who's gonna be making the next move who's gonna be jumping in next we've both got clams here on either side i believe flop nation have got i've uh, got two power clams and shush only has one but that is going still going to be making yourself visible to the other team so it is going to be potentially slowing you down just a little bit before you make that push before you go for that score yeah, but we're seeing so many specials on the side of Shush here. The Zuka going to be ending from Joe, but Balloon's also going to be ending their Zuka run too. We're seeing them trying to push up, especially with this Bully here. You know, they do have a little bit more leeway, but we're seeing Liam coming in from their backside, but going to be picked off themselves as Joe is going to be coming from this bottom right, trying to do a little bit of a maneuver here, you know, trying to flank them flank them in you know coming from multiple sides but it's not going to be working out as the members are just not following through with that and you're not getting the paint joke uh, balloons going to be going down we're seeing super todd going down so many picks on either sides and the cooler is coming out for flop nation which is going to be definitely in their favor we're definitely seeing a lot more back and forth with kraken now being you know not a 
big clam lit special so, mm -hmm. and i'm really happy to see that but now as i'm saying that we are seeing shush trying to push up even with pelu picked off here they do have the advantage in terms of where they are in the map but it's just going to be balloon left alive here trying to outlive this stamper going to be able to trying to come in from this left side they still have their cooler at active right now trying to get the paint they see liam over there they joe trying to get the pick trying to get some bombs out or something we're seeing so much paint going out right now we're seeing the zuka coming out from balloon coming out from that kid gonna be able to get the pick on pelu this might have been very beneficial for them the crab is going to be coming back out too as we're seeing joe gonna be getting picked off and it's just going to be balloon in half right now holding the ground for shush as you're trying to make sure that the members of Flock Nation are going to be pushing up any longer. Seeing Bobby, Babby, mm. Joe. <laughs> He's confusing me. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, you know, they, they were kind of like burning through their specials quite a fair bit during that uh, during that defense there, which does mean it's going to be slowing down their push in any case. We can already see how half here has got a pretty good position above the Grace here just to be able to stop them from even thinking about moving in, knowing that Pelu's down there. We've got half up there on the pencil, and we've got the rest of this front line that really, they really have to clear out. Super Todd knows exactly what to do. Get that Zooka out, find those picks. Pelu here is just trying to get anything they can done to play as, as aggressively as they can just to find an opening for the rest of their team. Does look like they've nearly found the opening, however, but, you know, Flop Nation is just going to be pushing them out with any tools they have, I feel. Like, if, if it's going to be a defensive trap tank, if it's going to be um, a wall, if it's going to be... Uh, Toxic Mist, anything that can potentially slow them down, that is going to be a risk that I feel that Shush doesn't really want to be taking. Yeah, no, definitely not. But with half just still living time and time again, that does allow the members of Shush to jump back very easily to mid. But we're seeing the members of Flop Nation, they have the cooler now. Both teams actually have the cooler, and they're trying to get the specials right now. But they're both at a standstill. And with 30 seconds, pretty much whoever scores in the next 30 seconds wins the game. That's it. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the specials coming out here. We're seeing Zuka's coming out from both sides. Two are going to be going down on the side of oh. Hot Nation here. Meanwhile, that kid's on their top left going to be going down too. It's just Liam left alive. They're trying to tag oh them. My goodness. They are. We're seeing Balloon coming in on this top right. They're using their Zuka, trying to get the picks. They're not going to be able to find it, but this triple splashdown might have just helped them out. They're going to be jumping in, and that is going to be Clams going in. And with the wipeout, Flop Nation is going to be losing to Shush, beating them out 2-0 as they're going to be going to Grand Finals to reclaim their victory against Essence. Oh my goodness, this was, I think this was just a, a, a fantastic show for the Triple Flashdown. Not a special weapon that you tend to see, especially when you have, um, especially when you have, I believe, like the, the other Nautilus, which I think is like pretty good in terms of uh, this map where you want to be uh, getting a bit of chip damage out with the rain being able to, uh, the ink storm being able to just kind of like push ahead with that and provide some supportive, uh, some supportive space taking as well for your team. Not only with that chip dam damage and displacement that you can get from that, but of course seeing that splashdown come out just at exactly that right, allowing, helping them get that wipe as well and get that uh, clam dunk in at the very end that's pretty much exactly what they needed i felt that um flop nation was constantly putting shush on the back foot uh constantly making their crab tank kind of uh play defensively as well which is you know it, it does shut down pushes pretty well it does make those pushes uh very difficult to pull off and you don't want to be facing crab tank when you have a power clam and trying to throw trying to throw it in um, but it does mean that every time uh, Flop Nation would, oh, and yeah, Flop Nation will be trying to uh, come back in, and they don't have a crab tank that they can place up on that bridge or on the grate somewhere uh, to be able to help their team to be able to kind of make the defense on the other side kind of fall apart a little bit. It does mean that they are going to be working a lot harder to be able to uh, get their resources back as well. Mm -hmm. but that, that did mean that they were they had a lot of work you saw so many times you know the members of shush just constantly in mid either trying to get their specials using their specials and it not being as effective as it could have been or just like just constantly trying to get something trying to get a special that will eventually get the push but it wouldn't work out 
but we're going to be seeing if Shush are going to be able to push up against Essence. They did lose last time, but we're, they're going to see if they're going to come back this time. Of course, Essence does have a lot in their court. You know, they do have Wumi, which is a very prolific, you know, QR duelies player. You know, they're going to run mm. in. They're going to use their duelies however they want, whichever one they want, and they're just going to be keep running mm. in, running in. Sune, of course, a very, very powerful backline player. You have... You have Scotty, which, you know, I think they still play midline. I, I think so. So they're probably still going to be playing that. And and I know there's somebody... Did we I'm, see them on the Neo machine? We might have. We might have. Mm -hmm. We might have them on the Neo machine. So I, I'm expecting they're going to play that. Of course, that's a really strong midline right now. You know, it has Zuka. It's pretty easy for if you played vanilla machine. When now is super meta. I feel like, you know, after switching that myself, I feel like Neo Machine is a lot more fun and simpler to play than current, mm -hmm. v, current v Machine. I have to specify current state V Machine. Current like state machine. V Machine. Uh, I, I'm not a machine player, but I know that, like, when V Machine, when its kit was released, every machine player I knew was absolutely elated. And I have to say that uh, ever since the nerfs have been just gutting that weapon down, um, so I feel like some some of these machine players have kind of been switching up to other buckets. And you know, buckets as a class, I think is I think are really strong. We've seen a, a variety of buckets uh, throughout Splatoon Three uh, at top level play, whether it's machine and the Neo machine as well, whether it's um, the V Slusher, that both Tri Slushers even have been have been making a fantastic showing in Splatoon Three as well, and also I have to say the Dread Ringer, uh, kind of like a goofy long uh, reef slider, plus also its its alternative kit as well. It's it's an interesting one to see uh, in terms of what you can what you can combo off of that. But um, Neo Machine with Zuka, I feel like, is always going to be extremely useful if just for the Zuka and if just for being able to play up, play above ledges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely. But I'm curious. That. I'm curious, like, uh, how you feel specifically more, like how how you tend to like prefer the Neo Machine. I prefer the Neo Machine to V Machine because, simply put, I feel like I can do a lot more with it. It's more ink efficient. Mm -hmm. I feel like nowadays, whenever I pop out a fizzy and try to, you know, slosh after it, I have barely anything left. And on top of that, I have a 220p special that I'm barely going to get. So the strength mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of machine players were excited for this because, you know, in Splatoon 2, they have the Kansas Splashing Machine and they got introduced to, you know, the fizzy bomb combos. Fizzy bomb combos very well with its 60 directs. But of course, in Splatoon 2, it had Splashdown, which is wasn't a very good special. So they were like, <laughs> oh, now we have Booyah Bomb, a very good special. So that's what caused it to rise up. You literally gave a mm. main sub combo that was very good from a bad special to a good special, which caused its rise. And now it's just like the pieces are very slow. It felt a lot faster, both in end mm. of S2, early S3. You know, you had less points for special, you know, Fizzy Bomb you know, wasn't 5% more ink tank. And of course, machine was a faster main weapon. I feel like a little bit of that still lives in Neo Machine. Point sensor, I feel like is a very good tool, especially commonly a Trizuka. I love to always just point sensor people and then be like, all right, I'm gonna Zuka them now because I know exactly where <laughs> they're gonna be now and I can just Zuka them without losing them. And also, point sensor is fantastic to help out the other team as well, just with the the extra location information in terms of knowing exactly where they are to be able to either fight them out, push them back, or if if anyone, if anything, is also going to like prevent any flanks from happening uh, successfully from the other side as well. When you start to point sensor them, um, doesn't do any damage, but the upsides are always going to be there. Uh, yeah. Speaking of speaking of upsides to machine, uh, ledges here on Clam Blitz Museum are always going to be extremely important. You do love to see some weapons that can really get above those, can really like uh, sit sit beneath those ledges and just throw up some damage up above there, which is going to be very useful. So I do expect to see uh, see machine or bucket or something of some some kind of AOE weapon come out here as well. Um, we're just waiting on a few more players at the moment, uh, 
before we get into the match, but I'll just run through the other ones that we're guaranteed to see because this is a, a best of five. We do have uh, Mahi Mahi Resort um, Splat Zones and we have Tower Control uh, Mega Mart as well. Before moving on to uh, Game 4, which could potentially be a Rainmaker Scorch in Game 5 for Robo Zones. But it does look like we are going to this first match already. We've kind of been theory crafting uh, these weapon comps so far, talking a lot about Machine. And so far, we don't even see a Machine. We see a Slosher, which is a bucket. But there's Scuddy on the Neo Machine. And we're seeing that double Zooka comp that they've been playing before uh, with Nilla on the tent as well. So those are your two Zooka team, as uh, two Zooka weapons with the help of a crab tank v Julius, which I think is going to be fantastic if you manage to get into some key positions over that other spinner um, to help them out. And once again, uh, we are seeing very fantastic, very fantastic early picks from uh, Strush being able to get that first clam in just 30 seconds into the game. This is looking, this is looking fantastic for them. Getting another one in as well with the help of those strikes, just to, just as a smoke screen and another one, a third one. My goodness, things are going fantastic for them at the moment, but they are not even losing players now. Two players have kind of gone down inside of Essence, and Shush is here just making sure that they are playing their spinners exactly right. Pelu trying to get up onto these greats. Pelu finally got up with the greats, and unfortunately for Pelu, uh, that's going to be the end of, of their, their greats adventure. Yeah. No, we already are seeing the members of us just pushing up as much mm -hmm. as possible, making sure that Essence does not have any room to breathe. Seeing their comp, you have a lot of combo weapons, but we're already seeing Wumi coming in, but the Zuka is trying to shut down this crab immediately coming out from half, of course, with that squeezer. Haven't really seen them on the squeezer so far, but it's nice to see, especially on a map like this, of course, the main sub combo is very strong with those splash walls, and of course, mm -hmm. the main weapon is just very strong in its own right, as we're seeing Balloon on this slosher trying to hold it down as Wumi is going to be able to score and he's going to be able to get two with one Zuka shot. Oh, wow. Okay, so with that wipeout, they are looking to get a return push of equal power to what Shush has. Essence here, um, unfortunately having lost a couple of plays, but are managing to jump another in. That wipeout is going to be making those scores tied, but is going to be one point in favor of Essence, considering that, uh, sorry, Shush considering that Essence pushed second here, but this is going to be a very close match. And it does look like they almost kind of, kind of played that similarly in Spence. Uh, being able to get a push down to almost exactly the same score on either side. They have actually uh, forced a defensive crab tank on the side of Essence here as they are trying to kind of move in off the back of this Zooka as well. They have lost their squeezer, however, so the, Joe's in a pretty difficult spot in the kind of cornered there. Uh, can't really, don't really have too many options to move forward yet before getting this squeezer out. Uh, sorry, not squeezer, cooler. I I don't know what I'm saying but before getting this cool up, but being nice and cool it up, they are looking to get that next push in with the help, once again, of these strikes. Let me not able to get anything in just yet, and those that Zooka and those bombs are going to be kind of pushing that just a little bit, but Joe does manage to sneak in and getting a wipeout off the back of that. This score is just going to be running down to 15 already. Zuka trying to force them back even further. It looks like it's just going to be the end of the game that Squeezer can get those in, which they do. I said Squeezer earlier on, and maybe some kind of foresight maybe i have like some clairvoyance here i can't say who's gonna win the tournament but i knew the squeezer was coming to do something at the very end <laughs> Yeah, I know. You literally saw from this game, the members of Josh, <laughs> they wanted to make sure they were as fast as they knew Essence mm -hmm. were going to be. You saw just how much they were in the face of Essence. Even this first push, the Tri-Strikes were able to give them enough space in order to get two Super Clamps after that first one, half staying alive here. You're seeing even this push by Essence, which was also very strong, almost tying up the score. This Zuka pick from Scotty getting a double on Joe and Balloon was very strong and getting them that half being the only one left alive to hold it down against four members. But of course, you know, Shush was able to hold it down, getting the pick on Wumi. If he lived a little bit longer, anyone else did, it would have been over. But we're also seeing just this wipeout they had too. And of course, the Zuka picks that were coming out. You're seeing Joe getting the pick on Nilla, literally swishing on them. Gonna be able to get, you know, of course, the win from that block as we're going to be moving on to Spot Zones Mahi. I didn't touch on it before, but I really like the, the double Zuka midline that we see coming mm. out from Essence. Of course, being Tenta Sorella, I know Nilla really loves Tent, and Tent is in a very good spot right now. And of course, the Neo Machine, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. as we both have mentioned before, 
coming out from Scotty. I feel like he's very strong, especially with Splat Dooley's going to be the short range option in Pencil. It's just going to have to, you know, come up against the members of Shush as they showed up with the Shot Squeezer Bucket Pencil. Again, really strong. It's got that trinity of weapons that we see time and time again. Bucket, Shot, Pencil, plus one. That is what we we're seeing so much. And we saw there why it's so strong. Try strikes from the bucket alongside its damage that's easily comboable, able to get its teammates in. Shot, of course, being that short range paint weapon that's able to fight and get a crazy amount of Zookas. And of course, we don't even need to talk about Pencil. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, and I won't talk about Pencil because there we see Pell on the Pencil once again. But I do want to say that uh, the double Zooka bucket and and tent that we're seeing is something that essence have actually won this very map mode on against shush we're pretty much seeing a replay of that in some sense i wonder if shush are able to make a comeback but already essence has has got control of the zone so far having lost the player though so that's going to be shush knowing that they have to capitalize on that with the help of the Zuka as well, looking for Nilla there, just to try and move around and take the zone back. But they've lost a couple of plays and they've lost their back line. Of course, you said we're not going to be talking about Pencil, but Pencil is so useful at just painting up this zone. Yeah, Especially no, with the help of those triangles. <laughs> yeah, it can easily just stay up on that snipe and just keep using its main weapon alongside strikes. It's very easy to cap the zone. And of course, that is what Shush is going to be bringing to the table. Of course, you know, Essence does have a pencil. Well, they're not going to be coming out with those strikes, though. That's not what they're going to be coming out with. As we're seeing, we'll be coming in with this crab, trying to get the pick up a balloon as they're just trying to run back out the pencil, trying to provide some cover fire for them. As Wumi is coming onto this right side, trying to see what they can do. They have the cooler at the ready, trying to get the pick right now. They're so mm. weird. They're going to be picked off as Nilla is going to be alone, trying to live, going to be able to get Joe. Half is going to be down, too. And Balloon is in a oh. corner. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Behind them. Wow, okay, so what I actually saw happening there in terms of being able to get that retake was uh this is the this is the other great thing about um Torella Tentabrella is that you have that shield that can paint for you and that actually neutralized zone allowing them to kind of sneak back into the zone as well, back of winning the fights here. And they've already got a very aggressive crab on that island over there, forcing out those jumps and also Nila kind of pushing up, just kind of blocking those areas. They know that they can't move in from. But Bola is going to be getting a pick on three here. Two players and a third down on the side of Essence means that Shush is going to be making a kind of push at this point. Not if Nila has something to say about it. Yeah, not if Nila has something to say about it as they're trying to push up on this right side. But we're seeing half getting a pick on Scotty with their Zuka here. Have one more shot, going to be able to pick off Nila too as they're coming for Sune. They want that pick right now, even if it's just two of his teammates left alive, including him. They want that pick, but they're going to be coming back, you know, trying to get the paint on the zone. They want to keep the lead. They want to keep the paint, especially with this tri strike tri coming out. They're able to get a trade on Nilla, but that's going to mean that Nilla's going to be coming back faster with that cooler as the members of Shush are trying to compete with Essence right now. Bojo getting picked off by Azuka. Same thing with Half going to be able to get picked down too. It's just going to be Balloon being the only, only midline left alive here, the only Slayer as they're just trying to live. It's going to be only them going to be picked off by Wumi's Crab Tank here, but they're going to get picked off too by half, and the Squeezer coming out here as Joe. They have the cooler. They're coming in, but they're going to get shut down immediately by Scotty and that machine. Oh, yeah, that was a very difficult play to pull off, and I'm kind of kind of not surprised that it, it led to a little bit of a sacri sacrifice there, uh, because even though you were nicely pull it up there, there was almost no no breathing room, no place to move at that point, and two players on the other side kind of easily being able to take you out. That is going to mean that they are losing the lead as well, in essence, being able to hold this zone But at this point, and it does look like even though they yeah, they might be at some point later on because that is going to be those uh, those penalty points that they're going to have to chip through. But they're not giving up the zone just yet. And yeah, no, the members of Essence are just trying to hold it down any way, shape, and form that they can. And of course, they do have the tools to use it with that double Zuka crab tank. 
They're going to be able to hold it down here. We're seeing Mila protecting Wumi as they're just getting out of their crab tank with that 10 shield. But we're seeing the tri strikes coming out from Balloon, trying to get the paint, but not going to be able to do it. Joe going to be going down here, but Suna is going to be going down to half. Going to be able to pick off Mila too with that Zuka. It's just going to be Scotty left alive, and that's going to be a wipeout. This might be the chance for Shush to set back up. They have the control. They have the zone. They have the cooler. And now they are going to be trying to do what Essence did to them this entire game going to be trying to push up and get picks and just hold it down just trying to get down these few penalty points but we're seeing the crab coming out from the left side from Wumi here alongside that sniper rider going to be able to get the paint with 30 seconds left on the clock not looking good right now for Shush especially with Wumi trading with Pelu here Balloon trying to hold it down with some tri strikes trying to bomb out the right side too trying to get some paint but they need help they need a teammate to help him out here here comes Joe with the tri Zuka trying to get a pick. They have one more shot left on the clock here. Trying to see if they can get in. Buddy, they're going to be able to get Rumi in these last 10 seconds. But Nilla is behind them right now. But they're going to get picked off too. It's just four seconds left on the clock. And right now they have to hold. They have to keep paying. Scotty's going to be able to take out Joe. They cannot sacrifice their lives here. They have to keep the zone. But it's just two of them left alive. Trying to keep the paint with the tri strike. They're going to be able to. But just a few more paint droplets left. The members of Essence are going to be able to push up. The machine tank going to be able to hold it down and going to be able to take that win last second getting the set to 1-1 one, one. wow that just goes to show the essence still have this map mode under wraps against shush in this tournament that's the second time we've seen them win specifically here specifically against this team as well and i have to say uh their co weapon comp has not failed them against something that is a little bit a little bit more meta um i it's just fantastic to see how the uh, how Nilla on the tent has been able to help them retake, help them block out specific routes that Shush had been trying to move back in. It just kind of slows them down just enough uh, to be able to hold the zone in their favor for long enough as well. Those last few moments, though, that was I, there were so many times where Shush were almost able to well, were able to neutralize and almost able to to um. Well, one of them, I can't remember, Essence or Shush. The zone kept getting neutralized. It was almost in favor of Essence, but Essence eventually being able to take it out in the end. As we're seeing here in this overtime. Okay, now I can now I can get fact checked by the by by the replay. <laughs> by the instant replay. Thank you, Double Productions. For your for your incredible production value. But that is gonna be Essence actually one one um to Shush now, which is a little bit different to what we saw in their previous Set they played against each other. Things can go either way here as we move on to tower control. Now, both teams have bucket plays, which are going to be so useful in terms of clearing out the stacks, in terms of clearing out the, the plat and the snipe area as well. Um, just being able to camp under those ledges to be able to push anyone off, that is going to be a dangerous, precarious spot that you don't want to be for too long. But if, uh, if Wumi's able to get a crab tank, uh, in some of those key areas, especially to help them push through those checkpoints. Things can definitely start to roll in their favor, I believe. I'm, I'm seeing this as a crab tank player because, like, you know, that, that that's kind of what I like to think, I have to think about when when, uh, when those checkpoints are broken. Where am I going to get the most useful crab tanks to support the team? But, as you, I believe you, you play buckets, right? Yeah. Of course, this yeah. has always been one of those maps that's just like both buckets and blasters. This is literally mm -hmm. their heaven. You're going to be seeing a lot of them come out here. Of course, we've seen Slosher and Neo Machine on both sides, both of those weapons. Not really V Slosh on Essence, but we're seeing Balloon coming out with the V Slosh. Of course, the Tri Strike, very useful here. And we're actually seeing the double bucket comp come out from Essence, being both Neo Machine and Slosher coming out from Nilla. Oh, this is fantastic to see. Of course, you know, this is going to be Bucket Heaven or AoE Heaven, at least anyway. But I do like to see that Shush has uh, decided to bring out the Squeezer as well, just to allow themselves to have the extra bit of range with that Slaying Shooter as well. We can see them kind of pressuring that stack, but they are going to be losing out that fight against Nilla here. We'll be losing out on a fight against uh, Balloon as well, who's going to be promptly cool it up, taking that our 
at least help them get that tower rolling for their backline as well. Pelu here just making sure that they are staying on. Unfortunately being taken off by that uh, Zuka, so I'm not sure necessarily if they are going to be keeping that tower rolling forwards because Essence is just throwing everything in that tower to stop it getting past that checkpoint, even though they did manage to break it. They just kind of went through all of those specials pretty much all at once. Yeah, but they weren't able to get through Joe, weren't able to pick him off, gonna be able to get Sune coming in on this right sack, trying to stay alive as long as possible, gonna be going right past the crab tank, trying to go right behind them here, as Balut is gonna be right in front, trying to get this pick on Wumi here, gonna be able to get it, as Balut is trying to go on this top right stack, and here comes the cooler out for Shush, but it's just two members left alive, and Scotty's going in the offense with his Zuka, with only Pelu left alive, Sune is gonna be able to get on the tower fairly easily, gonna be able to pick Pelu off too, and now the ball is in Shush's court trying to see if they're going to be able to push back but with all the AoE coming out over the legends not looking good for Joe here as Nilla is trying to get the tri strikes coming out to shut down that top left and take the lead as they're pushing up even more leaving Balloon in a pretty scary spot here as half is going to be on this top right side pretty much isolated trying to see if they're going to be able to push in but Nilla is trying to stop them any way they can or they're going to get picked off and even starting to get on the second check the members of Shush are coming back they have Cooler at the ready right now but scotty is in their top left it's trying to push in but it's going to get shut down as instantly as he was coming up as the members of shush are now pushing back up but they have to notice that bottom left that somebody got picked off no able to get two here it's just half and pelu left alive it's just pelu left alive here nilla is going on the flank of the century as they are able to get three can they get the last no they're going to be picked off as balloon is trying to hold it and pelu was able to jump back but again it's pelu and half alive only once again they have to get their numbers back up in order to push back up because how it's looking right now is essence is just going to keep pushing pushing more and more getting the picks on both balloon and joe they have to keep their life right now they have to get the specials in order to get the ball back in their favor yeah we saw probably that okay scott is coming out with the zuka and of course the strengths as well going to be helping them push forward ahead but those strikes in return is definitely going to be making this jump easily punished because there's no spot to move there we go <laughs> there we go that's kind of what i expected to happen there but it took a little while but it happened uh we're seeing balloon trying to make sure uh any of those stacks are kind of too dangerous for them to be able to defend on just to make sure they can get grab that tower whenever they want because uh essence have been able to pretty consistently paint up throughout most of their push but shush has slowly been kind of working their way back in either by sending those zookas out uh sending a shot out as well or just making sure that um the their squeezer play has been able to kind of push out the buckets just through the help of the fact that they have the extra range here. We're seeing Joe kind of like trying to make sure they can get some of these key positions to Zuka from once again to help that tower move further forward. Not being able to get a pick, but at least trying to throw a spanner in, the, in their defense just to kind of like make their defense kind of have to wait those extra few seconds before being able to move back in. Essence has lost three players now, so Shush could potentially uh, take this further to the next checkpoint, but I don't see uh, Shush being too frazzled, too dazed by what Sorry, Essence being two days by what uh, Shush is doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. They are so close right now. They just have to live for a little bit longer, but it's just Joe alive right now. They have to keep living, but it's just Balloon going to be jumping in. They were so close to getting to the lead, but now it's pretty mm. much just the members of Essence alive. Something that Essence that kept doing that slowed down the push from Shush was Ruby just kept coming in when everyone else was down, coming in from the backside, coming in from the left, just trying to get some poking power in there and distracting the members of Shush, which might be what get them the win here as two are going to be down. Joe left alive. Joe's going to be picked down Two, and it's just half here trying to come in on this stack but scotty's right behind him getting able to get the pick on scotty but now they have to get wumi down wumi has got to go here but they're still alive half trying to go in not looking good just two left on the clock two one they're trying to push in as much as they can but the tri strikes are pretty much going to shut them down and that is going to be the third game it was looking really favorable in the end for shush mm -hmm. they kept trying to get a push in but in the end they weren't able to get enough they weren't able to live for long enough they weren't able to keep wumi or the buckets off of them as they kept coming in one by one and it was essence that was able to take that win yeah by two points as well we're seeing these teams uh 
seeing these teams almost kind of like having evolved from their previous set against each other, this is a much closer set, I believe, than the one that we saw earlier. Um, Essence and Shush still, when we saw them play, I believe, I, was it Ship Shape? PC. Um, that was a one point difference. This was a two point difference. So these tower control games are extremely close that we're seeing between these teams. And I think just the fact that uh, Essence decided, okay, we're going to go double bucket here, kind of at least at least helped them. Even if even if buckets aren't like necessarily the most the best painting class of weapon, they are still extremely strong in terms of uh, in terms of just being able to fight in those areas where. If you have a high ground, of course you got advantage from those high ground. But if you're trying to fight against a bucket, you've kind of you've always got a little bit of a disadvantage there, just from the fact that those buckets are going to be uh, are going to be able to throw all of their damage up over that ledge exactly where you're standing. So Essence are sitting on two game wins in this set. We are moving on to match point now, which is going to be Rainmaker Scorch Gorge. Shush has has to win these two matches otherwise i believe essence is going to be taking the tournament as they are coming from the winner's side and shush is going to be coming from the loser's side now if shush are able to take these two games with themselves we will be seeing a bracket reset but essence if they're able to take this game we have a winner i believe or squid junction 66 so it's down to the line here for Shush to see if they can, if they have, if they have what it takes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw what Shush was able to do on this map mode before, of course, being Rainmaker Scorch Gorge, as we saw, uh, you know, we did see a little bit before with Pelu with that triple mm -hmm. splashdown. They might want to bring out that Nautilus 79 back again. Might want to switch it up a bit. Try to see if that will work better as we're getting into this match here. We're actually not going to be seeing that. They're going to be deciding to stick with the comp that they were running from before. And of course, you know, now it's not Mako, Mart, the members of Essence are going back to that Tenebrola comp. Yeah, it does look like uh, Shush are kind of locked in at the moment. They're playing serious. They know that they have. They know what the uh, the stakes are in this particular match. Uh, Essence are playing what has been working for them for the most part. Not doing the double bucket comp, but going back to the tent. I believe is at least going to be helping them, especially around these two passageways around the side of mid, in order to be able to hold those areas as well. Unfortunately, those two Zookas, uh, those two Zuka shots are going to be taking it down two of those players but they are going to be losing out. But that crab tank here from Wumi once again is just helping the, uh, push the defense back and hopefully if they can get that checkpoint at some point soon. We are seeing Anila here and it's very aggressive position with the help of the shield for the Brella just to be able to hold back that defense from Shush Essence being able to take that checkpoint. They're already able to check take the checkpoint here as they're still continuing to push not seeing Joe and Balloon trying to push them off, but Hap is trying to shark here, but Scotty able to put a really nice point sensor down there and pretty much so the prize half action as they're trying to push back up, trying to see if they can get something more. But Joe's gonna be coming out with the Zuka, pretty much shutting down Nilla, anything they want to do here. But Nilla's coming back with a Zuka of their own, trying to see if they can get some picks. Balloon's gonna be going down, but one down on either side. It's still looking rather even as Nilla's trying to push it up. They don't care, they want the picks, but they're gonna be going down themselves as Scotty is going to be going down too. On this left side, this might be the time for Shush to continue pushing, but Wumi was able to push on the right maker with him anybody seeing them able to get that pick and stalling the push of shush just a little bit longer which i mentioned before which it's really what Rooney keeps trying to do and what keeps working stalling their push just little by little by just getting in their face as much as possible is what Rooney's goal is and it's what's working for them yeah it absolutely is now they're playing fairly slow and steady i believe on the side of shush knowing that uh they can't move forward just a they can't move ahead just yet without the help of the zuka without the help of the um tactical as well and making sure that those players are out of those defense positions we see that Tuna was able to very nicely punish the the rainmaker carry there as they managed to dunk it because they hadn't been moved out of position and that is going to be helping the rest of their team be able to uh, take back mid as well knowing that those players are going to be back in the respawn mm -hmm. 
like we're already seeing pushing up, but it's going to be two down on the side of Essence, so that's not going to be going for long here, as Balloon is trying to use the Tri-Strike to push in, and with Sune in the Rainmaker free zone, it's all but confirmed oh. that they're going to be getting picked off, but they're going to be able to reset it by jumping off the edge with only Scotty mm -hmm. left alive here. The members of Shush are able to, you know, take back mid, hold it down for their own, even though we see Nilla coming out here on that right side, trying to wall it off with the tent. We're seeing Pelu trying to stay alive. And the members of Shush are trying to make sure that happens, even with Scotty getting a pick on the loom. But it's going to be two down, actually, with Nilla continuing to push up, half trying to lock it down. Able to get down Nilla, trying to push up on Sune, but Wumi's going to be able to jump in and even the score in terms of bodies on the floor. As we're seeing Pelu trying to push up, they just need a few points in order to get the lead. They're going to be able to get the lead, but they need to hold that that's not a very strong lead for the time being especially with how we've seen essence play this could be something mm. that they try to push up on and especially with those two players going down as well this is going to be a free retake for essence as we can see them uh pick up this rainmaker but what on earth was that two that 1v1 that we saw just there the sniper rider being able to take that down just shutting off that push and this is probably going to be uh essence at least trying to hold mid knowing that oh, well we kind of have to wait for this rainmaker to reset here they were able to kind of uh get a little bit of an advantage in terms of numbers alone but having that rainmaker just shut off like that from the from the pencil was not something i saw coming yeah no not something i saw coming either here you're seeing Joe and Hap trying to be pushed back by this Tenderbrella shield. But we're seeing Joe not caring, trying to get a pick on anybody they can, but they're going to be punished because of that. As we're seeing Cena using this unorthodox route on this top left gate, you don't see a lot of people using that. Very easy to get picked off on there, but they're opting to go for it, trying to push further, living. Joe pushing them back off, but before they get picked off by the Rainmaker in return, just to look alive, half and balloon have to hold it down. They're using the Zuka here. They're not able to get the pick though. <gasps> Over 10 seconds left on the clock. This is spelling bad news for Shush as they gotta come back up. They gotta get the picks right now. They have to get back. They have to lock in as Pelu they... is coming out with Joe. Nilla is trying to push back. Lily, this could be the end for Shush right now, but two left alive on the members of Essence on that top left side. This could be spelling good for them, but Scotty's trying to go for a flank. Gonna be picked off because of it. You're seeing Wumi on the top right here. Pelu literally in a standstill right now. They can't move because if they move, and move in the wrong place. That is the end of their tournament run and the end of the tournament period. But this Trizuka is trying to say something of it, but Nilla's going to be going down. It's just got it left alive, but they're coming on the top right. They have the cooler. They could just go for it here. Balloon trying to hold it down. The Zuka's coming in from Scotty. Can they get the game-ending pick? No, they're not, but we're seeing a crab team coming out here, and there's not much time. Just 10 seconds left on the clock. Scotty's going for it. Not going to be able to get it, but crab tank lob shots coming out from Wubi are trying to go for it, and that's game set, match, tournament, whatever you want to call it with essence taking it three to one that is squid junction 66 i saw the timer just slowly depleting on the overtime there as pelly was holding that rainmaker just patiently waiting for the right time to move forwards and i think what happened at the very end was it just exploded on them honestly it's it just exploded on them, and that's what happens when you're playing patiently on the defense, especially in overtime, knowing that if you just hold them back for far enough and just hold those positions in those last few seconds, if Pelu starts to run forwards, then you can just collapse around Pelu with the Rainmaker. If uh, Pelu's uh, forced to wait for long enough, that Rainmaker is going to explode. And if Pelu was able to actually move forward in, uh, further forward in any, in any case, uh, being able to get a bigger lead on what Essence had is going to be a very difficult thing to do uh, when you have uh, Essence uh, on the defense, uh, on the defend, on the defense there. Uh, just being able to collapse around um, the Rainmaker carrier with all of the high ground you have outside of spawn. But my goodness, Essence had a fantastic showing, but so did Shush throughout uh, throughout this entire tournament, throughout this set in particular, uh, being able to take that game off of Essence as well uh, early on in the set. Absolutely fantastic plays from all of these teams, I have to say. This has been a wonderful Squid Junction. 
and uh, it's, it's been a wonderful Squid Junction to see just how strong, of course, midlines are becoming more and more now with the recent patch that happened. And on top of that, you know, Clan Blitz being more healthy, we're seeing, you know, mm -hmm. we still see that trilogy of shot, bucket, and pencil, but we're seeing a lot more run and a lot more getting wins. And just that, you know, short range to mid range pencil that we're seeing a mm -hmm. lot. Of seems to be becoming more of the norm and I, i'm just loving seeing that happen more and more in all the different comps that we have seen here today of course all of these teams did so well and we thank them of course you know for coming and playing the tournament they all did amazing absolutely and it's uh it's i gotta say uh thank you to dapple productions for putting on an amazing stream as usual as well uh and also to our tos and streamers as well who are doing fantastic work uh sitting down doing the spectator cam making sure all these teams are are ready to to be streamed as well because you know it's it's always entertaining it's always insightful to see what these teams are playing to win these tournaments and as you were saying the seeing the the midlines kind of come in and uh and become a little bit more prominent in the meta as well it's always really interesting it's great to see uh, a variety of weapon classes as well we are seeing all of these all of these teams who have come in to come into play a, a number of recognizable 11 11 make a wish as well jelly squids um uh Le Jeu de Croix as well all of the, a duck motive as well that we saw on stream flop nation um shush and these has been uh, it's been fantastic having all these teams here to come and play squid junction 66 but i believe now that now that that final set is over that's pretty much the end of the tournament now isn't it yeah that's pretty much the end of it and that's going to be the end of our time casting so mm -hmm. you know, before we end it where can the people find you well, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Twitch at Lily Gravy Bread, and uh, yeah, I sometimes stream. Sometimes stream on Twitch. You'll probably see me commentate uh, sometimes for Swim or Sink, sometimes for uh, other tournaments as well. Every now and then. And where can the good people of Twitch chat find you? You can find me on Twitter at Ninstar123, as you can see on screen there, where I, you know, post what's going on. Uh, in my career, in my life, what I'm doing, what I'm commentating, all that stuff, any projects I'm working on. So you can find me on there too. And also a uh, big shout out to Jorine, our streamer for today, who is a fantastic spec camera as well. It's always great to see, especially the overheads and especially these instant replays, which has been uh, fantastic. You know, it always gives us always gives us some fun talking talking points, some some opportunities to yap, of course. And we wouldn't be here without our streamer either. So thank you very much, Jorion. You can give yourself a shout out too, I reckon, if you want. Oh, okay. Well, so uh, that's going to be it for today. Thanks everyone for tuning in. This has been Squid Junction 66 on Dapple Productions. So we'll see you next time. You all have a good night.